insurance when they go down. Yeah, the health insurance, I think, is behind it. That's clearly in there. Very high. I understand that. But every time I want to go to tree down, there's a huge yeah. crop. Yeah. So, yeah. I think. Yeah. Just pointed around at boards. Mm -hmm. Is that where they were primarily? In the shaded areas? Are we on the air? It looks like it's we are. Here we are. Oh, we'll call to order the April 18th meeting of the Lunenburg Conservation Commission. And we'll start with a roll call. Richard Burrish present. Todd Dwyer. Bob Pease. Present. Katie Childs. Present. Carl Luck. Present. Jack Rabbit. Present. Ken Jones. Present. All right, we'll start with announcements or public comment from commissioners. Good, Mr. Chairman. Mm, Mr. Uh, there's two things I would like to bring up. Uh, first of all, uh, Earth Day on April 22nd. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be a gathering at Wallace Park uh, from 1 to 4. It's being sponsored by the 4-H Club. And, uh, I mean, they're doing some wonderful things. Uh, the Stormwater Commission, uh, I mean, yeah, the Task Force, excuse me, uh, will be uh, hosting a table. And with the committee's permission, as in the past, what we do with the uh, car show, uh, seek permission for the Conservation Commission to participate as well. And uh, one of the th uh, few different goals on that with regard to our pre uh, participation is we will put out some little more literature on the Asian longhorn beetle. And uh, according to our forester, Gary, he's saying that it's coming, get ready. And where you see the greatest vulnerability, especially as to our farmers with regard to sugar maples and just about every maple, the birches, the gray birches that pose the real harm. So we'll put out a pile of literature on that. Uh, additionally, I would, uh, there's a number of people who, have, as a result of working in the new forest, I mean the, uh, the small town forest, have offered to volunteer to uh, help us clean up. So I'm going to put out, if, uh, put out a list of folks with email addresses, and perhaps we can start building up a, you know, a kind of a Bob Peace is going to go for a walk in the woods and pick up all the bushes, uh, branches. Would you like to go with them? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So we can get a, a mailing list uh, of events like that. So if that's success, uh, with your approval, I'd like to go ahead and do that. Okay, is that, that okay, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, I think that's okay. a great idea, Jack. Okay, thank you. The second piece is, and I'm gonna just jump a little bit, uh, it's with regard to, uh, I sent you something out uh, this afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, with regard to potentially doing a site walk. And this is in relationship to some activities that are going on with the Stormwater Committee. Uh, Phyllis Luck, bless her heart, hardest working. <laughs> best, person <I> know. <laughs> best person you know, right? Uh, has been I think doing he has to say that. <laughs> <laughs> He's smart to say that, too. <laughs> uh, essentially, we've been working on uh, quite a bit with regard to the DCI, the consultants, and there's been a full survey of the outflows going to the various lakes and uh, water bodies, and they've been able to identify some water bodies that would, uh, uh, specifically the mulpus, that would be an ideal candidate for some treatment. And they've gone to the DCI folks uh, through DEP and uh, essentially identified a grant that they would be seeking uh, from the uh, state of Massachusetts. And essentially it's, it's a pretty substantial grant. It's about $160,000 and it would address five of the critical outflows out, out, uh, on the upper part of the Mulpus. Uh, this would require a site walk on our part because it would affect us. But additionally, they're looking for a letter of recommendation mm -hmm. with regard and support of the grant to do the work on these outflows. Uh, it's a high return investment specific to the upper Mulpus. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll be more, you know, we'll be in contact as soon as that happens. Okay, but so when you have the application, right, something right. to put forth looking put for the forth. recommendation. Yes, okay. and we'll conduct a site map. But again, kudos to Phyllis because this is just amazing, the stuff she's doing mm -hmm. in terms of getting money. Okay. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right. Any other announcements or comments from commissioners? Mr. Pease. Uh, last week, uh, Matt Morrow, myself, and Matt Charpentier, uh, who used to be a member of the commission uh, but is no longer, 
uh, went to a meeting at the uh, Massachusetts Regional Planning uh, Commission or agency, I'm not sure what the right name is, uh, to talk about uh, regional uh, trails. And uh, it was a great meeting. Um, and uh, they're working on updating our uh, a trail map uh, for all of uh, Lunenburg. And uh, so progress is being made. All right. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Any public comment or announcements from the public? All right. Seeing none, we will start. We do have a brief presentation by um, Javier from the DAR on Emerald Ash Borer. I'm not sure what the best method to do this is. Okay. Okay. Can everyone see this okay? And I believe this should, this should be able to work with the gentleman mentioned. Let's see if he. Uh, he may just have to get his attention. Yeah. Let's see what he needs to. There he comes. <laughs> So I just put my eye on it. Flip it down. So try this on? Yeah. Fire button. And I'm sorry, I didn't get your last name. Marin. Marin? Marin? Yes, sir. That's really literature. Yeah, I'm just curious about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't steal the other thing. It couldn't have worked out any better, so that's actually quite good. We knew nothing. Yeah, we it's, it's great. Okay. Um, but you know, just while we're getting set up here, the reason why we're, we're, I'm here in particular is because uh, I'm here to talk about an invasive insect that was confirmed in Lindenburg. Uh, it's not the Asian longhorn beetle, thankfully, um, which is definitely a primary concern. The good news about Asian longhorn beetle is that the quarantine zone hasn't moved out of Worcester County the last five years, so there's still a federal, state, and local effort that's monitoring for the presence of that insect, which is very, very active and ongoing, so um, definitely fingers crossed that we don't have any issues with Asian longhorn beetle Lunenburg anytime soon or anywhere outside of Worcester for that, that matter. But uh, the reality is that unlike uh, Asian longhorn beetle, emerald ash borer is not federally regulated, so the difference is that it really falls on the communities, the towns, um, municipalities to take any action, if any, if they want to do anything. So the idea of this presentation is not so much to lecture you, but really just to give you an idea of what uh, what steps you can take if you'd like to mitigate any impacts. Uh, remember, this is really just a matter of what you think you can do with your resources and whatnot, but every community is different, um, so I just want to present a couple of different options. Let me just check to make sure everything is looking okay on this side. I think you have to plug it into yeah, your computer. Yeah, it's going to pull down. So I was checking with him. He mentioned that he was just going to follow along and play it on his laptop in the back there. Yes, for the people at home. Oh, that's that would make a lot more difference. <laughs> now I understand what he was saying. That's why I was asking what the best thing to do is. Technology Yeah, it's just like I said. I've never been in a situation where it's for the um, folks at home and then also for here. Um, but what would be the best outlet? I think there's a cord plugged in, the top cord. Yep. There, so yep. I see that this. should be an HDMI cord. Yeah, and then I'm seeing it. Right. Apologies for. Here. Back away. Here. Here. This is an RGB cord. Uh, whatever works. Yeah. I brought them all. Here. Here you go. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate that. All right, so get going. Oh, look at you with all the adapters ready to go. You know, when you're doing this full time, you got to make sure that it's happening. There you go. So let's see.
If not, this will break my record the first time. Oh. Just seem to be working there. Searching. There we go. Hey, hey nice. look at that. Bingo. No big deal. Um, maybe if I could just move this chair here. Nobody minds. Just to get this a little bit better. We are making this work, guys. Yeah. That's too high. I think that would be good enough, right? Yep. Isn't that okay? Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again for your patience. Um, as I mentioned, the real difference between uh, Emerald Ash Borer and Asian Longhorn Beetle is that the Emerald Ash Borer is not federally regulated, so it depends on your community to do anything. So I'm going to go through the slides real quick, make sure that you guys know what I'm talking about. So EAB is an invasive wood boring pest from China, just like Asian Longhorn Beetle. It only targets ash trees. Its native range is over in Asia, China, Japan, Korea, and Russia. But our first confirmation of EAB was in Michigan in 2002. There, it was a huge problem. It's wiped out millions and millions of ash trees all at once, and it's cost billions of dollars of damage. It is the fastest spreading insect pest we've ever seen in the United States, and also the most destructive. It was thought to have introduced the exact same way that Asian longhorn beetles introduced via um, tainted wood packaging material. So because it's a wood boring insect, there's a life cycle inside of wood, the wood packaging gets over here with the beetle, the beetle um, emerges in its adult form, now it reproduces its life cycle. How is it spreading? Um, well, its real um, natural spread isn't that fast, it's about a mile or two a day, it's a natural flyer, but the real issue is um, human assisted transport. You've probably heard the notion of don't move firewood, buy it local, burn it local. That's because you may be inadvertently spreading this insect. And that's what's really happening here, is that we are accidentally transmitting EAB across the state and it's really causing an issue. So just to give you an idea of how fast this spreads, this is 2002 when it was first found at Ground Zero over in Michigan, and then you'll notice all of a sudden it is pretty much everywhere. You'll also notice you have these isolated pockets that really don't tie into the initial infestation, and that's because people are accidentally transporting it. So that's what happens with when getting here in Lunenburg. So where is it in Massachusetts, the United States? So this is the last infestation of confirmation across for this year. This is everywhere it's confirmed in 2008 since April 2nd. And in Massachusetts, slowly but surely, it started spreading throughout the state. Uh, so the, least, uh, the latest county was in 2017, that was Brookline and Dedham, and it's just been spreading ever since then. So Lunenburg right up here, you notice it's right next to Shirley, where of course we have confirmed infestation as well. DCR has confirmed that we have EAB in the area, so what does that mean? That means that every single ash tree, and there might not be a lot, but every single ash tree that's in the community is at risk. Uh, it's only a matter of time before EAB gets there, and that goes across the country. People right now don't know what the state of ash is, so they're really kind of going through their options. But you couldn't go to a nursery and buy ash trees today if you wanted to. A little bit about the um, life cycle of EAB. They start to lay their eggs around now in May. Uh, they will tunnel into the bark, then they'll overwinter where they pupate, and they emerge as adults. You've got the shiny coppery uh, bottom under here. They're called the Emerald Ash Borer because they're a member of the Jewel Beetle family. You sure? Uh, the Jewel Beetle family. They're iridescent, but I should point out, you'll probably never ever see the adult, so even though you know it's here, keep an eye out for it, it's great, but what you really want to look for is the signs of the damage. Um, the beetle, the larva itself is what causes all the damage. Uh, they are pretty gross looking, but I will tell you, there are tons of other native insects that actually do have larval stages like that, so identifying just by the larva is really difficult. The real thing you want to be able to do is genuinely identify an ash tree. Now, if I had to really, really, really uh, twist your arm, who here feels like could confidently identify an ash tree? A couple of us, okay, that's actually quite impressive. Most people don't, and that's normal, you know, that's quite okay. But the reality is that if we wanted to educate the residents of Lunenburg, make sure that they know what they're up against, make sure they have all the resources and options for them, you want to start with making sure they know what an ash tree looks like. Now, what exactly, what kind of damage are we talking about here? Uh, well, unlike ALB, EAB only feeds in the cambium layer, which is the layer right beneath the bark, it's the vascular system, and essentially starts to feed in the, all these S-shaped galleries to the point where the bark starts to chip away, and it's starving the tree. The tree can't get any nutrients whatsoever. It emerges from these little D-shaped exit holes, which you can see riddled through trees. And then you, um, you sometimes might see this effect of what they call blonding. This is excessive woodpecker damage that's been feeding on the larva. The woodpeckers do not keep the numbers low enough, so that's something that kind of hot, basically keeping your hopes up, but the reality is that they don't do much uh, as far as the numbers. What you really should be looking for is signs of ash decline, right? So when the canopy starts to die back, what happens is they can't photosynthesize, they start to shoot out these epicormic shoots of the trunk. It typically does that around the signs of excessive damage. 
that's where you really know something's wrong. So there are a couple of native mash borers that don't do damage, they're completely non-invasive, so I want to make sure that you keep that in mind so we're not really getting alarmist to the point where everybody's um, just thinking any holes in mash are worth worrying about. But the reality is that right now, if we don't do something about it and you have an ash that's worthy or what they call legacy tree, it's going to go. So the idea now is that now that we have a heads up, develop a management plan or a strategy to spread out any costs over the long term and make sure we're not really kind of getting all um, ahead of ourselves at once. So what exactly is at loss, uh, at risk? Well, obviously ash has inherent value. It's a tree that, you know, as a, as a genus deserves to exist. It does have great economic benefits. It's got um, cultural benefits for uh, Native Americans, but the reality is a practical standpoint as far as a community and municipality goes to, it comes down to safety, right? So any tree that's been heavily fed on by emerald ash borer is structurally unsound. It's susceptible to, fi um, to falling, and you may not even know that it's really gonna be cracking. So the real idea here is that you want to make sure you avoid something like this. This was the ice storm over in Worcester that really set the alarm bells off for everybody because even though the new Asian longhorn beetle was there, it wasn't until this giant ice storm where all the trees came down at once that they really started to spur reaction. What does this mean? Now the town of the city of Worcester has to spend all this money removing all these trees all at once where they could have been spreading that cost, like I said, over time. And it's a real, real strain on the budget. So this is what we're trying to avoid. If you have a lot of ash trees in the area and you don't know where they are, <coughs> A potential infestation is a real risk to utility, to infrastructure, to roads, to anybody and everybody. So it all starts with knowing what's happening, right? So as far as the federal level, there is a quarantine, but when's the last time any, anybody here got pulled over by a state police officer asking if they have any ash trees in their property, right? <laughs> not very common. So there's not much that's happening as far as a quarantine. It all comes down to people being educated and doing what they want to do. Uh, I should note that there's a quarantine within a quarantine because in Worcester County, ash is still a host tree of Asian longhorn beetle. So you wouldn't be able to move ash out of Worcester into to the great rest of the state if you wanted to. Um, so what is the state doing? What are we doing? DCR, Former Conservation and Recreation, is doing a great job of doing visual surveys. They're monitoring around. Um, so even the areas where we don't know it is, they are constantly checking. It's how we discover that um, it's here in Lunenburg. This is a program that I run where I basically do a form of biosurveillance where I actually use these native wasps to track for the presence of VAB because this native wasp feeds on progressive beetles. And because the wasp can't differentiate invasives from natives, I typically go to a nest, I will intercept the beetles that the wasp is catching, and I'll determine whether or not it's an invasive, which is a pretty unique program. It's a great way to get scientists, um, citizen science program underway. These are photos from the field from just the summer. A little wasp butt here, EAB in the area, is what they call a discard. What, what, what we, in the summer, typically, do these wasps? Uh... Active? That's a great question. So um, typically between June, I would say, into September, depending on the season. Um, I work with a lot of like scout groups or you know gardening groups, anybody and everybody who wants to have an active program. I will say there's probably not much uh, merit for this program here in Lunenburg because we know it's here. It's really best utilized in areas where we don't have EAB um, confirmed. Um, but as far as, okay, we know it's here. Well, let's say we want to talk about some options. What can be done? So the first thing that really um, you want to determine is going through what, what options are available. Um, if you want to preserve trees, there are insecticide injection treatments that you can do, um, but it all starts with education outreach, right? Can you right? back up? Of course. What you talk about, what does it mean about vertical trees moving populations? Yeah, I, so typically I would have a little more time so I'd go into everything, and I'm gonna break these down for you um, one by one, but Girl trees, for example, is used for two different things. Number one, for monitoring for the presence of population by creating a girdle tree that is a strip of bark that kills the tree, makes it very, very attractive to any beetles because basically this tree is highly stressed. It's putting out all these volatiles and these compounds in the air and all the beetles are picking up on it. Uh, so it's a great way of saying, okay, we know EAB is in Lunenburg. Here's an ash tree nearby infestation. What if we strip this tree because it's gonna go anyway to get an idea of how bad the infestation is? The injections are great for preserving trees where you know it's a low-level infestation. The biocontrol is a program that DCR is um, developing. It's a pilot program where they're releasing parasitoid wasps into the environment in hope of keeping population down. But that's a long-term goal as far as federal. Uh, it's really a matter of what can we do here in the town. Um, so the first thing I would say for any community, and my job as Forest Pest Outreach Coordinators to make sure that every community is prepared, is to know that it's here. So basically just a very basic outreach campaign, making sure that people are aware, via be email, newsletter, uh, bulletins, whatever it may be, just to make people know that if they have an astronaut property, it's at risk. Um, we have tons and tons of outreach materials. I have brought some here to give out to you guys if anybody was curious as far as like identification cards. We've got um, uh, decision guides. We've got um, kits that I can loan out. Again, just to really spread awareness. But I think that apart from going from the um, outreach campaign, the next step up is really developing a monitoring site. So this is something that I think really, really goes well. Again, not to create, like to raise the alarms, but if anybody was driving around Lunenburg and they saw an ash tree that had canopy dieback, all these shoots growing out of it, a bunch of blonding, 
uh, bark peeling off and exit holes, you're pretty much absolutely positive that's EAB. What is that person gonna do? Well, ideally, they would rep um, they're reporting someplace like this. This is our personal EAB reporting site that we have through the um, state's website. People come in, they say where we saw an ash tree, they send pictures to me, I basically do an assessment. I say, you know what, thank you for sending that in, but it's not EAB. But every now and again, people will send us great images and then they'll go out and then we'll check it out. Um, Lexington has done a really fantastic job. I've worked with them doing presentations like this to let them know. They are not a um, confirmed EMB infestation town, but they are next to Waltham, which is. So what they did is they created this on their town website. They did an outreach campaign to let people know. And basically anybody who's driving around and sees an ash tree that's in decline or showing signs of infestation can report it and the tree warden or the DPW folks can go and inspect the tree. Um, so what can we do if we want to take action? Uh, it really comes down to, as I mentioned before, it's just developing a management plan and seeing what options are available. That typically starts with a very basic tree inventory. You can't really preserve your trees if you don't know where they are. So that is something that you work with your tree warden. It doesn't have to be very, very extensive, but again, just knowing where your ash trees are on your property. Typically, depending on how in depth you'd like to go, you can get a bunch of different information regarding like depths, uh, sorry, the tree height, um, the diameter breast height, things like that. But for something like this, really not necessary. <laughs> Um, there are also different options as far as uh, finances. So DCR has the Urban and Community Forestry Challenge Grant, which is a grant that's a matching grant. Um, the deadline for intent to apply is by October 1st, if I'm not mistaken. But they are great if you want to develop a tree inventory, you really want to um, develop a different plan to manage everybody here. So once you have a strategy, you say, okay, now we know where our ash trees are. We'd like to start to remove some, treat some, and then some just let them decline. It really comes down to finding out which ones you think are viable, which ones are worth saving. Anybody here been to Tower Hill Botanical Garden in Boylston? They have probably the largest, most attractive ash tree I've ever seen in my life. It's huge, I mean, really, really kind of a unique tree. But you better believe that they started treating that very, very early on because Boylston's right next to um, Worcester and it's only a matter of time before EAB gets there. Um, as far as wood utilization, there are tons of options too. You know, sometimes you, you end up with what's called a stump dump. Um, but working with DCR, working with people like me, um, Sean Mahoney at DCR, their whole entire livelihood is depending on um, wood utilization. So again, if you want to develop a program to take down the trees and use the wood, we can do that as well. Um, just a really quick municipal case study, and again, I appreciate your time, I won't take up too much more. This is what they did over in Cambridge. I understand that Cambridge is a city and it's got a lot of resources that not every community does, but just to give you uh, a kind of picture perfect idea of what can be done, what they did is they did a full inventory of every ash tree in the city so they knew exactly where they were, they mapped it out, they determined which ones were already declined, so they determined which ones they're gonna take down over the course of the next few years, so again, they can spread those costs out, and then they determined which trees were worth preserving, which trees had real significant value to the community, and those are the trees that they actually singled out for injection treatments. Um, so they have gone out, they've also chosen replanting areas. Of course, we all know about biodiversity. Uh, we don't want to have monocultures where if there comes one thing like ALB or Emerald Ash Board, it just takes out everything, so biodiversity is key. And then of course they did this, where they reported it, uh, sorry, they created this um, awesome information page on the town, of, on the city of Cambridge website where in, residents could really know about what was going on. Uh, this is what the injection treatment looks like, is one of the options. And then this is something that I think is also great for a community like Moonberg. It's um, especially with Arbor Day and Earth Day coming up, as you mentioned. This is a tag that we add on all the ash trees to really get the community talking, to really spread awareness, to really get people understanding what's at risk. Because I always like to think of myself as saying, look, you know, as I mentioned, this tree has value. What does a future of no ash trees whatsoever look, um, look like? I live in downtown Boston. Um, personally, I walk past the Holocaust Memorial every single day. All of those trees are ash trees. So all of those trees have incredible, significant value to people, and they're really important to everybody. So again, spreading that awareness goes a long way. This is just a couple of examples of more of the uh, stuff and swag that we're able to give out if anybody didn't want. And then just to really kind of drive the point home, EAB is here, it's not going anywhere. Um, if you have ash trees anywhere and everywhere in Lundberg, they are gonna go unless you decide to treat them. No one is saying you have to. It really just comes down to deciding whether or not you think it's in your best interest to get a treatment tour going. But I will tell you, by preparing for EAB and developing any kind of management plan, you will save costs over time and then uh, essentially save more trees. Um, that being said, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, I did bring here, I know that you guys are busy, uh, little tiny samples of EAB and cards, which I will leave for you in case you want to look it out. Uh, and then, and be happy to answer any questions you may have as well. Yes, sir. Um, it sounds to me like the only thing you can do for EAB is this injection thing. Did I get that right? So as far as preserving the tree? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and currently. So, you know, for like uh, 18, you know, 16 inch diameter breast height tree, what's it gonna cost? 
That's a great question. That's best to go through a certified arborist, which I am not. And I will say a lot of cities will put out different bids and talk to different tree companies to see as far as like what- A thousand bucks? I honestly do not know. Uh, I, I can tell you that, and I really couldn't tell you what the cost would be as far as treatment on the trees. Um, there are tons of resources available that will break down those costs though. Could be not, because I've never heard of injection. Uh, yeah, it's it's really incredibly effective. Mm -hmm. uh, with EAB, like I said, being- You have to do it every year? Mm -hmm. uh, typically, that's the best case. You do it in the springtime, as it gets through the, the tree. Again, that's not something you have to do, but it might be you have one particular tree on Main Street right in front of the town hall that happens to be an ash tree. It happens to be a tree that people really care about. Um, my goal isn't to say, you know, hey, you have to do this. You have to go treat every single tree or tree right now down. I just want to make sure that once the community knows about EAB and knows it's here, that you feel prepared to have the right information and the right resources to move forward, should you develop a plan or should you decide to do anything about it. What I would hate is for someone to have an ash tree in their property and say, hey, you know what, my grandfather planted this tree, no one told me that this bug was here and it just suddenly gave out. Um, so that's the real goal overall. I, I can see, you're in a beautiful tree in your front yard, you don't want to lose it. Mm -hmm. It's worth a thousand bucks. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's that expensive to do it. Well, anyway. well it's, it's just a little frustrating. Really, and, I, and it really just comes down to, like I said, knowing where, if you have an ash tree over a power line or anything like that, you said, hey, that tree should come down because EAB is here. Yeah. We got to take it down now. That goes mm -hmm. a long way. But again, thank you so much for your time. Like I said, I'm going to leave some of these materials here. Should you have any questions, and then Matt's got my email as well. If anybody has uh, any follow-up questions or would like any more information on the further. Quick question: Have you um, notified the local utility company? Uh, no, sir. Uh, DCR, um, like I said, notifies me. Yep. My goal is to do outreach. I don't. Typically, I will tell you, most utility companies have um, foresters that work for them that are on top of this thing. Uh, we are hosting a conference out in Pittsfield, which is ground zero for Massachusetts, because the Berkshire County area is it just covered with um, natural sands of ash. And uh, we'll have about 60 different people from out there, including utility companies, that will be doing that. So I, I can't confirm whether or not the utility company here knows about that, but something worth discussing. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, well, before we started exchanging emails, some of your colleagues from the USDA office, the regional one, came up and gave me all that literature. I've got like stuff hanging out. Great. In fact, they were the ones that told me to expect you. Oh, awesome. Um, the question I have is, and I didn't ask them at the time, are there any training classes being offered to loggers and I'm so glad you asked that. So um, I was just looking up the, the tree warden for Lunenburg today versus the Mass Tree Warden Association, but I couldn't find any, so I, that's why I didn't invite them. But um, we are hosting two in-field free workshops for any DPW staff, any foresters, anybody who has boots on the ground so is interested in not being in a room and seeing pictures, anybody who wants to really touch trees. There's going to be one in Shirley, which is obviously right next door. It's going to be held May 3rd. I'm going to send you a registration link in case you want an invitation. Okay, I'll send it right to the Yeah, pass it to anybody and everybody. Uh, and then we're going to have another one on May 8th, and that's going to be in North Andover. And again, the idea is that we're going to do an ejection demonstration, we're going to do a girdling, we're going to do a tree trap hanging, and just um, some general awareness to make sure people are up to speed with what the damage looks like. Yes, sir. Um, the, in terms of outreach and people awareness, the picture you showed with the signs on the trees, mm -hmm. Um, that, that looked like a great idea. Yeah. You, you get those signs through you? Or yes, you absolutely. Signs? So this is my email up here. This is my phone number. Um, uh, we have a, a form sheet on the Mass website where schools and communities can order free outreach materials. They're free um, to ship as well. We send out packages. So um, there's a gentleman by the name of Jeff Esch in uh, Newburyport. Probably, and I don't want to say overzealous, but the most passionate EAB um, outreach person I've ever met in my life and he is out there and he's just talking to communities and he's putting up these things and now with Earth Day and Arbor Day they really really go a long way to make sure people um, are know about this because again the idea is they would be a real tragedy if someone didn't know and they, they had a desire to preserve the tree. And all the state parks are still not allowing wood to be brought. Oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. They, <laughs> they just confirmed EAB in Vermont about two about weeks where? ago. And Vermont. that was and that was a huge deal because you know we hadn't we didn't know it was there for the longest time. And like a lot of these infestations, they tend to be here for years before anybody actually says anything. The ones over in Worcester, I mean, the, the, the mother tree, as they call it, was covered with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these beetles, and it took one person to say, this doesn't look right, to really report it. So again, just spreading the word in Lunenburg, if people know about EAB, be it a mailing, be it you know just a link on the website, would really be a great start. Great. Yes, sir. Tell me, are we down any extra wood if you're sitting in the back of your car? So I yeah. did, um, like I said, I have, the table, uh, yeah, Thursday. so I brought this specifically for um, the Conservation Commission, this um, stack of ID cards, and then this is just the brochure 
for the wasp watching program, which again isn't going to help too much for Lindbergh because it is here. But if you work with any neighboring commissions that were interested in kind of spreading the word and getting their own program, that might be something worth um, checking out as well. Whatever extra you, you have, we'll take, we'll put out. And Matt, do you have any more material on EAB? Yeah, in your office. I have a ton of it. Do you? Okay. The, the, there's the, um, the paper hand that's hanging right at my door. Okay. The blue envelope says, please take one. We'll steal some. Yeah, put it on. Okay. That'd be great. Just leave me some so I can make color copies. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, any literature I can get that Absolutely. I can post yeah. in public areas. You know. Like I said, what I think would be a, a really, really great, inexpensive, you know, s just first step and something they might want to discuss whether or not the commission thinks it's viable, but um, really developing just a small link on the town website that says, hey, EAB is here, think you have EAB, you know, where did you see it? Where? Because the, the link that we use on our website is a Google Sheet, it's free. I, it takes me 10 minutes to make them and send them out. So again, just having a place where the community can go to and really kind of put those efforts goes a long way. Okay, good luck. Awesome. All right, any questions from the public for Javier? Well, thank you so much. Well, I really thank appreciate you. everybody's time. Thank you for the brevity. That was definitely appreciated. Of course. All righty. Yeah. Hanging in public places, too. I know a guy that has a donut shop. <laughs> really? Did the burger sign go in? No. Pub, putting that stuff in public places, you know, like the local donut shop where everybody goes. You know anybody that owns a donut shop around there? <laughs> All right, let's move forward to our first hearing. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the Town of Lunenburg, Wetland Protection and Municipal Bylaws, a public meeting on a request for determination by Scott Patterson for the rehabilitation of an existing paver patio and replacement of footings within the 100-foot buffer zone and 200-foot riverfront at 914 Flathill Road. And is Scott here? Oh, there we are. I'm here. <clears throat> Charles, I do. Scott mm -hmm. So the last meeting, we asked for some narration, some more detail on the plan, mm -hmm. which I had done. Um, I have a few copies. Nice. We can share. We can share. Cut down here. Sorry. <clears throat> you guys got one time? questions that were brought up the previous meeting pertaining a dock that's in the back there. Uh, we have no intentions of doing anything with that at this time. Okay. Um, there was also some mention of something about the hillside, I believe that uh, was brought up. Um, I think it's the one that's on the flat hillside mm -hmm. and there was, I mean, the places not been maintained for several Over years. Wrong. Yes. Right. So at some point, um, it will be cleaned up and landscaped, obviously. Okay. Just cleaned up. <clears throat> so uh, here's the question. Sir, would you consider removing the dock? It's beat up. It's not doing anything. It's just sitting there and rotting. And we'll remember that you had a dock there, but just get it out of there. Because it's essentially the dock is in the water. Yeah, it's the old thing that's just thing in the water. Yeah. Little thing in the water. It's all it's just sitting there it's rotted, it's if attractive the, nuisance. So it just doesn't create any other issues for us. We'd be more than happy to remove that if the board would like that done. Okay. Well, we can add that. Okay. Sure. Thank you. I guess the question that came up last time was the footings, are you replacing the footings over on the whole house? No, it's just the highlighted area. Just that, and it, yes. That area, that sort of porch room or that room that sticks out. Yes, there. Okay. and there's some actual three-dimensional photos there where you can see the actual area where the yep. work is done. Okay. 
may refresh your memory from the site often. <clears throat> Okay, so the footings are being redug under this. Yes, it's eight, eight by here. fifteen. Okay, correct. Are they being redone um, from the inside of the house or the outside of the house? If because the last time we the talked, you said it was going to be from the inside. Be done from the interior of the house. Okay. So all the excavating and digging is going to be inside. Inside. Yes. Okay. How do you get? Is it all hand dug, or how do you get the excavator hand inside hand dug? Okay. Yes. It's not a very large area. Okay. You have this, the area of that structure highlighted on here? Yes, it is, on both plans of... So it's the highlight in yellow? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's the patio plan? It's just, right, currently there is a paver patio there. It's kind of like a 12 by 12 clay style patio, so it'd be a new paver patio that would be put in place. And is it going to be put in at grade, or is it going to be raised up like it is existing? I think that it'd probably be like what's existing, and it would just have like a more of a peel, of, as opposed to railroad ties, it'd probably have like a curving. A block curving, curving, curving or something, curving. a curving, okay. But it's going to be just the existing footprint. Correct. All right. We're not expanding anywhere out of the footprint of the pre-existing dwelling or path. Okay. And the drainage would be able to go through the patio. So it's between the blocks of the water that gets on the patio. It's, 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 it's going to be a permeate. It's going to, everything will be able to drain through it. It's not an impervious surface. All right. Yeah, that's definitely a appreciated detail that we didn't have before. Yes. And all the work they're looking to do this season, this summer? Yes. Okay. And it still fails. In. Okay. All right. Any other questions from commissioners? No. I, I wasn't able to go on the site walk, but based on this, these plans, it's a lot clearer to me what is going to happen. And uh, so I appreciate that. Yes. And I, I don't have any other questions. Okay. And did you draw this out? I did. Okay. Everything just is to scale. The only comment would be is this 50 foot no structure zone is from the border of the brook. You just have it from a static point. I did go from a static point. Yeah, correct. so it should be 50 feet right along the brook. Okay. I mean, you're not doing any new additions. This no. is all part of the existing house. Correct. So it would be grandfathered in, but that would, if you do it again for somebody else, you sure. just want to make sure you're following the, the perimeter of the brook or the wetland or whatever's there. So. Other than that, again, thank you for the additional uh, detail on here. It makes it much easier to figure out. All right, any questions from the public on 914 Flat Hill Road? All right, seeing none, I'll accept a motion for a negative determination. So moved. With second. A motion, with a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right, perfect. Thank you very just much. Um, give Matt a call once the hay bales and soap fence are in place before you start construction, just so we can go out and verify it. You bet. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, moving. Thank you. Keep those copies if you like. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Moving to our next hearing, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the Town of Lunenburg, Wetlands Protection and Municipal Bylaws. A continued public meeting on a request for determination by Marley and Ryan Dixon for the construction of a sandy beach at 307 Townsend Harbor Road. Mr. Chairman, this is the one, um, one I had emailed you about. Uh, we discussed the applicant was asking for continuance. Okay. And this application is in response to our enforcement order? That's correct. And what was the daily enforcement order? Um, the original non-compliance went out October 23rd, and the enforcement order went out December 7th. All right. Uh, I think we should discuss briefly that um, we contact the applicant and let them know that if they are not present with a viable application for our next hearing, that we start finding them, as was described in the enforcement order that was issued. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Yes, Rabbit. Can I have a quick conference with you in this regard? Um, 
where I will be recusing myself. Uh, I, I have, because of the being in a butter, mm -hmm. I have been working with them, and I can tell you that uh, specific to the showing up tonight, not necessarily the final juris uh, disposition, they have been working on it. We have been working. Uh, they're waiting for somebody to you know, uh, essentially create to finish the elevations. Mm -hmm. That's what they're tempted to do to meet the requirements of this council. Uh, I still think the chairman's idea is, is the right approach. It's gone on for a long time. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have any comments? On 307 Townsend Harbor Road. No, I support your uh, proposal. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the public on 307 Townsend Harbor Road? All right, I'll accept a motion to notify the applicants that if they are not present with a viable application at our next hearing. That viable plan, you mean? Viable plan, yes. That there, the fines will be issued as was described in the enforcement order. So moved. We second. Have, we have motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, and I'll accept a motion to continue this until, what's the date of the next meeting, the 4th? The 2nd. The 2nd of May. So moved. Second. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right, moving forward, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the Town of Lunenburg, Wildlife Protection and Municipal Bylaws, a public meeting on a continued notice of intent by Signature Living, LLC, for construction of a three-family unit at 654 Mass Ave. Good evening, Jack. All right. Good. I'm here on uh, Greg Roy's behalf. Okay. Um, I guess at the last meeting, you guys decided to continue and wait until we got to the planning board mm -hmm. um, in case there were any changes. There were some minor changes. Uh, about 90 percent of them were outside the buffer zone. They wanted to uh, have a second water line coming in here. Uh, some lighting around the building, uh, berm elevations were adjusted here. Um, that was pretty much about it. Um, I guess since then there's been some site issues with the contractor and whatnot. So yes. Is, is he now aware that there's a cease and desist on the property? Uh, I didn't even know that at this point. I okay. kind of get thrown into this. Yep through some emails. Okay, because um, yeah, we, we were pretty clear that there was to be yeah. no work inside the 100-foot buffer because it, it his like application was, a, was not approved. There was between uh, the owner and his contractors and they okay. since stopped. Mm -hmm. and, uh, no, there were, there were actually, actually when we were on the phone, I did tell you that I was going to let them know um, and Greg, that you needed to let Greg know that the stop work order was on the whole site now instead of the buffer zone. Okay. But they did stop. Um, but you should advise your client there are fines in the mail. Okay. Better. They, they don't have, they won't have to sign for them, but there is tracking. So when it's delivered to their address at 555 Chase, the post office is going to send me a notice. So I'll have a record that they delivered it. Sure. That's just to prevent any further misunderstandings because yeah. there seems to be a lot of misunderstandings on mm -hmm. this guy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's fines in the order of $1,200 that'll be coming his way. All right. I'll let him know. And he can go to the magistrate in Fitchburg and pay those. Or pay them. Or pay them. That's right. Go to the magistrate to pay. You have to go to the magistrate's okay. office to pay them. Mm -hmm. And then the magistrate will give you a receipt. Okay. So this is the final plan. Uh, planning board is all set with it. They've closed their hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, and you had received copies of the <coughs> last week from our office. Yeah, I got them. So. All right. Yeah, well, those are pretty minor changes, so I don't. Anybody else want to see a little close up of the plan or what was the reason? Do you know what the reason was they put they wanted a second water line put in? That I don't know. I do not know. But you said it just runs parallel with the first. Yeah, well, it looks like the first one had stopped here. There's a yep. gate valve, and then the second one actually, I don't know, maybe it was the location of it. That I don't know. But. Well, I know I did also get a copy of the revised. Greg also revised the stormwater okay. um, calendars too to fit the new plan. Okay. So all the revised documents are referenced in this order that I mm -hmm. promised I would write up. Mm -hmm. And um, they are, it, well, the stormwater is in the file at the office, but I've got the new plans here if anyone <coughs> wanted to look at them. All right. And you've um, verified the calendars? Yes. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments from commissioners on 654 Mass Ave? Any questions or comments from the public on 654 Mass Ave? I have one more comment I wanted to make. Okay. Real quick. 
Um, I'm hearing from, let's just say, authoritative sources that your client may go down from a triplex to a duplex. If that happens, the plan's going to need to be re-updated and we're going to have to be notified to see if we need to amend the order. Okay. Depending if he shrinks it down in the similar area, we may not need to amend the order, but I need to the same footprint. I need to let the commission know either way so that they could decide whether or not they want to just approve it as a field change or want an amended order. We'll do. Okay. Take a look at the, the plan when they submit it. Exactly. All right. And I have these to sign. All right. Seeing no other questions or comments, I'll accept the motion to approve the notice of intent as presented with the updated plans. Mr. Chairman, for yes. order, yeah. um, for clarification purposes, where essentially there's a, there is an outstanding fine right now, mm -hmm. and where there is a cease and desist order, are we required to vote on this at this point? Or do we can we wait to see what's been rectified and assure the fine has been paid? Uh, we cannot withhold the permit due to the fine. Those are two separate enforcement okay. actions. So yeah, the cease and desist at this point. was on any work on the site until such time <coughs> as his permit has been issued okay. and signed and brought to the Registry of Deeds. Right. His permits are no good until they have been recorded at the Registry of Deeds. So we wouldn't necessarily require any remediation prior to us voting? Um, I, I myself did not see any need for remediation. Okay. It was work that was planned, but unfortunately it was work that was done without a permit. Okay, that's fair. So it was work inside the buffer zone without a permit. Okay. So I myself didn't, I know um, Todd was out there and Carl was out there when we saw it. I, I agree with you, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, there's yeah. nothing really to remediate. It was just he kept yeah. jumping the gun. Yeah. He kept working. Okay. You may recall buffer. at the last meeting, we asked the engineer to stake it out, and we told him specifically, don't work in the buffer zone. Right. Because he asked if he could work outside the buffer zone, and then we went there, and he was working in the buffer zone. So okay. that's hence So we killed a few ticks early. That's what he did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd make a motion that we uh, close and approve. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right. We'll open our next hearing pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40 as amended in the Town of Lunenburg, Wattlin Protection and the Municipal Bylaws. The public meeting on a continued notice of intent by Hickory Hills Association for the approval of drawdown management plan at Hickory Hills Lake. And I think at this point we still are in continuance because there is no DEP number has been issued. No. So, Mr. Chairman, that that had actually been scheduled for, uh, for the next session. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll continue it to and, the next session. And Matt, we still don't have a DEP number. Nope. Nothing. No. 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 He just was looking right now. So. Yeah. Uh, All right. So at this point, I'll accept the motion to continue to May second. So moved. Second. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Moving on to our next hearing, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the Town of Lunenburg, Law Protection and Municipal Bylaws, a public meeting on a request for determination for an addition to a single family home by David Ossoff at 46 Fire Road 12. Hello. If you guys want, you can slide those chairs up a little closer and sit down. I'm missing a signature page, man. Okay. Shouldn't be. Oh, there it is. This is for 654. The one that was promised for tonight. Yes. Well, the one that, if it was approved, yes, it would yeah, be signed. You're right. I was not careful with my reports. Yes. Just I wanted to make sure that we had the, the updated plans because I didn't yep. want two plans flying around. All right. Uh, now that we have a public hearing, if you want to describe what we are looking to do at 46 Fire Road 12. This is the only one there. Yes. yes. Okay. 
Actually, I can look at it online. Camera? Yes, Mr. Is this, is this for a request for determination? Yeah, it was a continuance. Uh, it is filed yeah. as a request for determination. Okay, thank you. Okay, so do you want to describe it? Tom, Tom's our contractor here, so he may be best able to describe what um, exactly we're doing. Okay. So we are proposing to build a 20 by 26 edition front of the post that's already there and um, that's about it I guess did you do that measurement that I had asked you about yes yeah and what did you find uh, it's about 62 feet and about 54 feet okay 62 feet from where from the uh, right hand corner of the proposed addition so it's 62 feet from the water's edge there. Yeah, over to here. And 54 feet from the other. Yeah, yeah, that would match the measurements I took really quick. Well, I'll come close to it anyway. Yeah. I had like 62 and 52, so. Yeah. All right, we, and we, we will need plans submitted that do show those measurements. Okay. So we can write it right down on here now. I guess. Okay. Yeah, this map does show the... Uh, that's that's from the opposite side you have actually you're on two sides you're surrounded by water on two sides so the buffer zone is actually flip-flop oh so you get the buffer zone and the 50 foot on one side and then you've got the 50 foot and the buffer zone on the other side because they come from both sides of the water because you've got the street and that little area strip of vegetation that's intersecting mm -hmm. so it kind of you have a second zone from that side that flip-flops with the first side it's almost like a mirror image almost okay. It's, it's, that's kind of funny because your 100 foot buffer zone line is actually in the water. So, and from the wetland the on water. the other side. So <laughs> yeah. You do need to marcate both wetland systems. Okay. So, what we should do is, is it's, you should scale the, that's a 10 scale plan. So, you should scale that out with a ruler yeah. um, showing the dimensions. You, you can come see me tomorrow and I'll show you how to scale the drawing on that. Sure. For the other side. Mm -hmm. What's the proposed foundation system for the addition? Pardon me? What's your proposed foundation system for the addition? Proposed found, uh, four concrete. Four concrete and it's just go uh, four feet with frost walls? No, uh, it'll the be about uh, yeah. seven, mm -hmm. ten. Okay, so you're going to are you match the basement, existing basement? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Based on the extent of site work proposed, um, Mr. Chairman, I my thought is that the request for determination is inappropriate for this application, and it should be resubmitted under a notice of intent. Um, requests for determination are typically uh, used for for uh, minor activities, and and this is a major activity that uh, I think. It's appropriate for the more stringent application. Um, I don't know the other commissioners, members' feelings, but, but that's my opinion. Well, respectfully, as the agent, I, I disagree with that. I think this work is basically on both sides. Well, on one side, you're in the 50 foot slightly, but the house is in between that and the lake. And on the other side, you have the street. Um, if we actually did a notice of intent, the only difference on this was that you would still require the hay bales in the same spot. There actually would be no difference in the scope of work. He would still be lock locked into the same scope. And on that side, the street side, which is more sensitive, he's outside the 50 foot no structure zone, which is why I think the RDA is appropriate. But I mean, that's my recommendation, but it's up to the commission. Mm -hmm. The commission can disagree with me. What, what's the existing condition now? Is it is it lawn area there now? It's very uh, sandy. We can't even grow a lawn. Okay, so it's kind of sparsely <laughs> it's vegetated. Really, it's yeah. It's the grass. It's all. And this is a this really is a retaining sparse. wall that runs the entire basically width. Of yes, yes, that runs uh, the width of the lake. And this is the road. So the the wall is between the road um, and your your yard. 
No, the this front, the front this wall. This is the retaining wall back here. Okay. This wall over here was removed um, when we put this retaining wall in and when we put the well system in over here. Okay. That was from an, a former order of conditions because they replaced the retaining yeah. wall lakeside. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what's here now? Is there anything that... Nothing. Yeah. It's just it's sand. It's just sloped it's from your house it's down from the to the house really down. steep slope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We we do have a plan to put the wall back in. Okay. So we're going to put the wall back in. We're putting a proposed addition. Uh, we will need a waiver because some of the proposed addition is within the 50 foot no dis no structure zone. Oh, so it's as well as the entire wall. No. The house, other uh, addition is in the 50s. Yeah, uh, yeah. portion adjacent to the house is inside the 50s. Okay. Yes, from the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, in, the and entire also, wall being reconstructed is inside. Right. And Mr. Oh, Chairman, this they're is also excavating to get down to the basement side. level of the existing wall yeah. to match, yeah. match that. But so that's quite a uh, extensive excavation point on this side with the street. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Luck. Um, I, I'd like to support, more, mostly from a procedural point of view, that um, that this really should be a notice of intent. I mean, this is this is significant work, uh, comp all within the buffer zone and touching 50 foot and not far off 50 foot the other way. So, I think this is a pretty major, uh, major project. And if if this doesn't rise to an NOI, I'm I'm not sure what else does. I mean. Yeah, I, and I do support both you and Mr. Dwyer's position that this should be a notice of intent. Now that information is coming to light that we're going to be putting the wall back, which means we're going to have more grading. We have a waiver that they're requesting within the 50-foot no structure zone for the um, proposed construction. Plus now we're going to be doing grading possibly in the 30-foot to put back yeah. a, a wall that is no longer there that was abandoned. Well, the so. wall, is, wall is the... the the, the sides the of the front it. of the wall is removed. The sides yeah. are still there. Yeah. Both but uh, unfortunately, given the level of excavation that's needed, uh, if this is not done properly and engineered properly, we, we could have quite a mess running across Fire Road 12 and into the wetland system. So just the, the little hand drawn sections on there right now are not enough to make me feel comfortable in approving this level of construction in this tight of an area because this is a very tight area that you're trying to work in what exactly would you um require sir um at this point i should really pre um, present this to a professional engineer to draw out to make sure that your grades are proper make sure that the grades are put back adequately okay. so that they'll support one of my concerns would be supporting your walls of your basement yeah. You know, depending on how much soil and the grade of the soil it's put back, if it would support the wall, if the wall is going to cave in, oh. to monitor during construction, um, what we have for putting the wall back, the height of the wall, make sure the wall construction is proper. So if you're going to be backfilling the wall, that the wall's not going to collapse. Mm. I mean, you have a lot of engineering issues on this piece of property with what with what work you are describing to us right now. Okay. So it doesn't sound like many of the members and I'll let others speak for themselves I, I, I don't see enough um, detail in, in the work to support this approval of this at this time okay. you said something about that this wall used to be here mm -hmm. and it's been removed and you plan to put it back the front wall we were going to put back to and but we don't I mean it's just not necessary if it's going to cause a problem and so are you applying to put it back now or you're not applying to put it back now? Well, no, we're just applying for the addition right now. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, one, one other uh, point I'd like to make, and I think if the application does turn to an NOI, I think before we get to that point, it would be a service to the applicant to uh, have the commission weigh in on their opinion of granting the waiver within the 50 foot buffer zone. Mm -hmm. um, this is a sensitive area and increasing the impervious uh, within that area. Uh, in addition to allowing a structure to be built within the uh, 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 no structure zone, um, it, it is something that we should, have, in my opinion, pull a commission to see who would be open to it to see if we, they could move forward with it. Are you talking about the stone wall? I'm talking about the addition. All 
right. I, I guess I'll weigh in first myself. Uh, after having seen the site, um, the topography, the level of development, the subsoils that are there, don't have. I would grant. I would vote to grant a waiver for the proposed addition in that portion of the 50 foot. It is on the far side of the house. I don't think it's going to have any effects on the wetlands on either side or given the porosity of the soils there, any any additional runoff as long as the grading is done properly. I would be encouraged also to vote in favor of the waiver if the wall was put back and the grading was such that it would slow down any runoff or chance of erosion. Mm -hmm. So if you bring the wall up three or four feet, now you can bring the grade up three or four feet flatten that off so you'll have a much greater chance of infiltration of runoff and erosion or runoff that will alleviate the erosion absolutely because once the water runs down that hill it hits that blacktop runs across the blacktop carries all the gravel and everything right down in the one one now the stone so, wall is new to me but i just because this is the first time i've heard that about the stone wall but mm -hmm. i gotta caution you guys if you're going to rebuild that wall okay. do not make any part of it higher than four feet Okay. Because if you do, the building department will automatically, by state law, require you to do a whole new level of engineering just on that wall. Wow. Okay. Okay? No so problem. don't let it go above four feet. So, so, Mr. Chairman, do I understand you that you're encouraging them to apply for the wall? After having been on site, I think the wall would be a benefit in this area because it is very, very loose gravel. It is very steep down to the road, falls across the road, and then it just drops right down in the wetland system. So if they are looking to put the house in there, that's going to add impervious surface. If they grade off the area, that will add to the area of infiltration. Thank you. So I think one would benefit the other. Thank you. I understand now. Well, part of the thing, too, is, is without the stone wall there, the applicant's wife, right? You guys are married, yes. right? Yes. Um, noted that they can't even grow a lawn and part of that is because that wall's missing so the erosion has been increased and with the wall it would hold some of the land back and change the dynamic there for them thank you no, I, 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 I was not able to go on the site walk so yeah without the wall it would be a different story but okay. and the wall is there it's historically there it was just recently removed and they're putting it back if there had been no wall there'd be no grandfathering mm -hmm. which would change my decision but as presented as long as the wall's going back uh, I have no trouble with the waiver. Mr. Chairman, I have no problems with it. And uh, with regard, as long as the wall's back there, I wouldn't have a problem. Okay. I agree. I, I tend to, I tend to agree, but I, you know, without seeing the final plan and the grades and everything that goes with it, that makes it okay. I, I would, yeah. Oh, reserve my uh, decision until I see the final plan. Yeah, I'd agree with Carl. Yeah, we need more information mm -hmm. to fully make a full opinion, but yeah. I'm leaning towards it. Yeah, yeah. This this is not a vote. This is just this a poll. Yeah. This is a poll to see. You know, <laughs> if we all said some that we wouldn't grant a waiver, then you would know you'd be wasting your time. And we're just we're not interested in wasting your time. So okay. Or you might. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Chairman, I would not support um, additional development within the buffer zone. Uh, I think we've set precedent around the lake. Um, on sites that are much less um, developed than this one uh, to deny um, construction of, of uh, impervious within the 50-foot uh, uh, buffer zone. Um, and I don't see a reason to um, grant a waiver and, and veer from that precedent. However, I would support uh, rebuilding of the wall around the property. I think that would be a benefit um, from the condition it's in. All right. I guess I, I, Mr. Chairman, I, I just have to ask, not that it's our business to tell you what to do or not to do, but have you considered going up a floor so you don't have to get into all of this, uh, these issues with the buffer zones and? Um, we did. Well, the existing foundation, <coughs> questionable whether it would support the weight. I mean, I did have an engineer yeah. uh, look at it a few, few years back. If you do have that in writing. It would behoove you to maybe add that to your application as well as a reason that you can't go up and you're asking for the waiver. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, good. I was going to say, was it from these guys? Uh, yes. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments from commissioners on 46 Fire Road 12? Any questions or comments from the public on 46 Fire Road 12? Well, I think given the, um, the discussion that we've had here, I'll accept the motion for a positive determination on 46 Fire Road 12. So moved. Which at this point just means that we're finding that this project does have implications in the buffer zone okay. and that a different form of filing is required. Okay. So we're Plan wise too? Yes, definitely. I want to specify about what you want in the plans and who would draw them. Uh, it, it, it would be my opinion that you would hire an engineer to properly draw out all the structures, the proposed structures, the wall, and that way there they can verify that it is a sound plan, that the, the um, foundation is secure where it's going to be dug. The wall will be secure and holding back whatever fill you decide to use. Okay. So, unfortunately, I don't think just some pens and uh, pencil lines on the plan are going to be sufficient at this point, so, okay. given the amount of work that you're proposing to do on this very tight site. Yeah. So, Mr. So, Chairman, that's yes. the, again, looking forward to the next step. Um, would it be normal, I mean, when you look at this, the space and we've seen there, mm -hmm. and, that, and now knowing it's pretty deep foundation, there's going to be a lot of material. Would that normally be shown where that material would be stored while this project is in place? Because I'm picturing a pretty big pile of stuff. That would have to be addressed, part of the order. Yeah, it, would, it would certainly be part of the application when, when it comes before us. I mean, no, it's not going to be, a, in my estimation, a one hearing meeting. I mean, it will, there is quite a bit of work that's involved here as far as you know, digging to get the foundation in, you know, which we ran into in another project that, that we saw the hole going in, but nobody saw the hole needed to put the hole in. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so there, there are a lot of things, you know, erosion protection on both sides of fire road 12, yeah. downstream, upstream, so. All right, so we currently have a motion for a positive determination. Do we have a second? Second. Nope. Point of order, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Uh, on their application, um, they also had a, uh, you proposed to take down a tree, if I recall. Oh, that, yes. There is based, based on the amount of excavation, you still think you'll have to take that tree down? Yes. We do, and yes. Um, we, we actually had an arborist look at it, and he said that the tree was actually a danger anyways because this, uh, the soil is so sandy mm -hmm. that it's not really going to be able to support itself anyways much longer. So, you should um, add that to the application. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, for sure. If you definitely have yeah. any work that's proposed, any trees that are removed, soil yep. excavation, structures as far as walls, foundation, stairs, mm -hmm. drainage, water lines, anything, anything you want to do within the next five or six years, okay. aside from the addition, anything, yes. swimming pools, sheds, anything, mm -hmm. throw them all at once. Yes. Okay. So Good. you don't have yeah, to keep so coming to back. Keep doing this. Yeah. 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 My plan I drew actually showed a step down in the basement. Okay. Then we'll add that. Add whatever you want to do to the... To the engineer. Yep, to the engineer plan, yes. Okay. Yep. So, all right, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any other discussion? Any other comments on 46, 46 12 to the public? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right. So I would start with an engineer and show them exactly what they're looking to do and let them go to work. And then come to the next meeting? Or? Um, it's probably going to take you a little bit and you may want to have him just propose it. So you want to schedule with the engineer so he can come out and, and do the presentation okay. to answer all of the questions that we have. You, you may want to consider talking to these guys because they already have your data on file. Correct. Yeah. So that they can get stuff that you need to get done a lot <coughs> more rapid. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, they already so have it if all. If you want to in get another engineering company, they have to start from scratch and do the whole thing over. Oh, we'll, that's go back. we'll definitely yeah. get back to GPR. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have Thank a good you. evening. All right, moving forward, pursuant to Master Inner Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the town of Lunenburg. Or Canadian, but that's the order for um, 654. Yeah.
Yes. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the town of Lunenburg, while the protection of municipal bylaws, a public meeting on a request for determination for an addition to Dippin Donuts at 455 Mass Ave by Paul Carapapas. Carapatsis. Carapatsis. Hello, gentlemen. Hi. <laughs> I'm here on behalf of uh, Pablo. Okay. He wanted me to help him with the process. He has right now in the shop three freezers and a cooler. And the shop itself is roughly around 750 square feet. And he'd like to be able to get rid of those and okay. put a walk-in cooler freezer in the back. Mm. All right. So we did do a site walk on the property. I guess one question, just because you're looking for a waiver to the 50-foot no structure zone, is right now you've got it shown there. Is there any reason that it can't come off here? There's, good, well, there's no parking here now anyways, and it looks like your pump chambers are right. on this side, so if it came off and went there. That would make if I if we can get the same square footage, I guess it would be all right. But okay. it's going to be a combination freezer and cooler, mm -hmm. so I don't know how that works out. Okay. Now that was one, when we did the site walk. That was one of the questions we had because to put it in here, you need a waiver because we have a no structure zone mm -hmm. that you're looking to add into it. So. So if we put it here, we'd have to make it. This is more like a rectangle. Mm -hmm. Would end up being more of make a square. Make a little bit more of a square. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we could do that. Okay. Because yeah, it looks like it would fit in there pretty well. That's what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The question we had, and unfortunately it wasn't anybody on site when we did the site walk. Is the proposed uh, freezer unit, um, does it extend into the building as well, under the roof? We'd like to have it. No, it doesn't. We'd like to have it. It's a standalone. Yes. A standalone. Okay. Yes. Is there yeah. access from the building into it, well, or do you have to go would, outside? We would yeah. have to make access. We'd like to have it in the building so the help doesn't have, doesn't to, go have to go outside. Doesn't have to go outside. Outside, yeah. 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 So. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a walk-in cooler from yeah, inside. That's why we, yep. we wanted to put well, it that in actually that might wind up being a little cheaper because then you wouldn't have to remove your handicap ramp and all that stuff because you'd have to remove all that concrete from the back. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, the other problem we noticed when we were out there was more of a safety issue. It really tightens yeah. the drive around mm -hmm. quite a bit, and I would imagine that somehow you're going to be offloading into the freezer. Yes. You're not going to be, your deliveries aren't coming in and going in this way. They're going to be trying to offload. Yeah. So trying to get a truck in here and offload. And I guess it, it doesn't matter as long as we can have that space. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter if it's on the side or the back. Okay. Do you want to continue for this week and research this to make sure it is a viable option for you? What you're going to want to do is go to the Board of Health. Yes. Um, she doesn't work tomorrow, but go on Monday. Mm -hmm. Um and talk to the health agent or Mr. Gariffi um, about whether or not they don't have an issue with you putting it close to the tank. I don't think they will, but you should double check with them. That would be one of your biggest. Okay. So over here we cannot put it in. Well, you can as, a, as no other option. If, if this option works, it's a better spot from our standpoint than this spot here. Okay, so we'll try for this side. And yeah, if, I mean, if you come back and the Board of Health says, no, you can't put it there, mm -hmm. then we can entertain putting it here. Okay. But at least when we waive that part of the bylaw, we already will we'll know for sure that there's no other option. Okay. So. That's fine. Awesome. It's just a little bit more elbow grease, that's all. Mm -hmm. We can work with that. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Plus the triple chocolate muffins. All right, so with your permission, we'll just continue this for right now. All right. Any other questions or comments from commissioners on 455 Mass F? No. Questions or comments from the public on 455 Mass F? Seeing none, I'll accept the motion to continue to May 2nd. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, moving forward, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the Town of Lunenburg, Wetlands Protection and Municipal Bylaw, a public meeting on a request. All set? Okay. Pursuant to Mass General Law, 
Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. In the town of Lunenburg, Wildlife Protection and Municipal Bylaws, a public meeting on a request for determination for an addition to and a deck addition to a single family home at 564 Page Street by Tim Legello. Legio. Le Legio. This is the second plan of water health on me. Okay. So we did see quite a bit of work out there, Tim. What are you looking to do? Work regarding what exactly? Uh, there was a lot of grading out into the pond. Uh, the only thing that, when I moved in, I didn't go wrong. We have another uh, I don't, not everyone can, is going to be able to see this, but from about here into the woods yeah. was just completely overgrown. Okay. So to put the silt fence in, I, I know that has, that has to be done before, you know, excavation can start for either one of the projects. So everything was moved, the trees were cut down, the brush was taken out. And um, that's as far as I got because I hadn't, I didn't get it. Okay. Um, so here's where we stand. Right now, we have no permit on this property. Any grading, tree work, brush removal has to be permitted through the Conservation Commission from the 100 foot setback to the edge of wet. So all of this work, anything done in this zone has to be permitted. So technically all of your grading has been done illegally without a permit. Your septic system also, your permit hasn't been issued on the septic system yet. There, has there, was, there was no work in, anticipated in starting the septic plan. I mean, that's not, I wasn't you know, gonna just go dig out bottom of bed. That wasn't gonna happen. It was just removing the brush and everything and mm -hmm. the vegetation that was there. That was it. Mm -hmm. There was no grading. There was no changes. Okay. Well, um, unfortunately, we were on site and, I mean, you've graded or there's been soil disturbance throughout this whole area that looked like there were trees here and the trees have been removed, the stumps have been removed. Correct. Uh, this is no. This is work that cannot happen without a permit. Okay. So... Uh, you might, at this point, I, you do want to contact your... That's Doug Smith. Engineer, mm -hmm. because this needs to be filed. I mean, this is a different permit. This is a no different intent permit through the Conservation Commission for this project. Uh, as far as I know, it's intent. I mean, that's, I don't really know anything about it. That's, I can't pay him for that. I don't know. Okay. Well, then you need, if you paid him, you need to contact him because he should know better than to even submit this plan to the Board of Health without well, submitting it to us. Without having him come to us first, I spoke to him about that today. Um, about the fact that you know he, he gave you this plan without telling you to come to us first, mm -hmm. which he should have advised you, but he didn't. Okay. Anyway, um, on that, you've done some work in the pond, and that wasn't supposed to happen. There was no work in the pond. No, it was right on the edge of the pond. Okay, okay well, it wasn't in the show. pond. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I didn't okay. expect to get the pond. This is this is not to dispute this. I'm trying to give you a, to, to to help you with the direction on this. Okay. Have Doug do a replanting plan. Or a planting plan going around that pond, and okay. maybe a landscape plan that would blend in with the natural area. You know, something that would blend in to protect that wetland and would look good for you guys living. Okay. There. You know, it's actually not as bad as what you would think. It probably would be easy to implement. Okay. All right. So the first thing, I, myself, so, I'm gonna. Yes. I'm sorry, I have not. So this is an existing three-bedroom house. This is an existing three-bedroom house. The driveway is here. When we did our site walk on Saturday, this whole area has been excavated. And all of the trees have been removed. All of the stumps so have is, been removed. Is this an existing septic system? This is proposed. So what, are they, what is the existing three bedroom house using for a septic system now? From what we saw on site, there's a four inch pipe that ends right about here above ground. It's going to a septic. 
whatever was there. Did it, did, frozen. A, did it go to a tight tank or something like that? No, it, it went to a hole in the ground. I mean, it, okay. it, 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 I, it the area, the, the, the pipe is still there when the site wasn't cleared, so that's just Yeah, I noticed that this okay. morning. Yeah. So, I mean, at some point, I'm sure the Board of Health will go out and take a look at that because it's. Uh, Jim, Jim was it today? I showed it. Was. I showed it to him. Okay. I mean, it is what it is. It was there. All right. Well, you, you want to do something to make sure that wherever it's flowing is not overland and into the wetland system. I'm well, sure to give you the idea of scale, it was probably conservatively a half acre that was uh, completely cleared of, of trees and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, essentially the, the low brush and, and whatnot was completely cleared. So just exposed earth. Yes. Yeah, just, just completely graded off. So uh, do you have a copy of this plan, Tim? Multiple. Okay. So I would recommend that you get some mulching straw and you hay around this wetland to the 50 foot setback until such time as your permit is issued for the continuation of work so that we don't have any erosion issues because it is there is a pitch right into this pond so we do need to do something to cover the ground so that we don't have any erosion through there how about a silt tanks that need to go in regardless of what was going to be in the first place? I mean, that seems a little, I mean, what am I going to bring in three trucks of hay? No, it's kind of... Well, unfortunately, you'll want to talk with your engineer because you do have to cover the soil. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, unfortunately, it's just that it is all exposed. There's no vegetation left. There's no roots left. There's no stumps left. There's nothing there. It's just graded soil. It's right, right up to the pond? Right up to the right edge of the pond. pond. I oh. get it now. Yeah, Thank right you. up to the edge of the pond. Mr. Chairman? Yes, um, Mr. Rabbit. This would normally be time to levy some pretty heavy fines for this. Well, if he's going to do the remediation work. On top of that? Yeah. On top of that? Mm -hmm. This is, I mean, you got board of health issues here. You got material that's just flowing out of the ground, not attached to anything, yeah. rolling right into it. This is septic. You know. Sir, I, I'm like, I'm not trying to be rude, but when you buy something and that's the way it is, you're working with what you got. Mm -hmm. When I bought it and before that, septic was just going in the backyard. I invented the pipe that went to the septic tank. When did you purchase okay. the house? I purchased it about a year, year and a little bit ago. Okay. So, yeah, so you've had it for a while. So I mean, and, and you know that there was an issue there. So because obviously you've, you've put forth the effort to get a plan. Yes, so sir. I would in the next seven days or we will take it up to the next level that Mr. Rabbit is describing, at least in my opinion, I would hay the 50-foot setback along the edge of the pond. So okay. I know you can, I think a bale of hay covers five or 600 square feet. You can get a hay spreader from Taylor Rental or Home Depot. I, whatever, I'll make it happen. Okay, yeah, and contact the engineer because he should be well aware of how to take care of that. I, like I say, I'm very okay. disappointed in um, Doug Smith that he let this get to this level. I don't know. Because he does know so better. Notice of intent is that, I mean, you spoke. He knows. Right? Spoke he knows. So, okay. okay. Yeah. Now, you should contact your engineer and Matt will contact him again and make sure that uh, he is moving forward with this with all haste. So if you're going to file a notice of intent, the work that's proposed on this RDA would go on that notice of intent. Correct. So mm -hmm. the proposed addition, the deck, all yep. of that stuff would yep. go under one plan. So that would be my recommendation, yes. Now, if you're system. planning on doing anything else in the future, in the next like three to six years, could you get yeah. an extension? You can show him like that. Yeah. Where you were on the How can you put it on the plans? You know, put like work that you're anticipating on doing in that time period on those plans. The, the addition has nothing back. to do with Doug Smith at all. Nothing. I know, but with, it the, should be with part the violations of on the site, you should put it on your application. What I'm saying is, you're going to do one application for everything now. Mm -hmm. The remediation, the addition, septic system, and anything else you might have planned, say in the next few years, like if you want, you were thinking of maybe putting in a pool or a couple of extra sheds. But you draw them on the plan now because if you don't, you, you, once we issue that permit, if you want to do any additional work, mm -hmm. you're going to have to come back. Okay. So it's a, actually, we're going to end up saving you some dough in the long run. Okay. All right, so like I say, my recommendation is going to be within the next seven days to cover the 50 foot no structure, the 50 foot zone to the edge of the wall, edge of the pond with hay. Mm -hmm. I would also like to see some little more permanent way of getting 
the affluent from the pipe into the hole, not just kind of an open end and then a hole and hoping it gets in. Either put a T or a, a 90 degree or come up with some way so that when it rains and it doesn't flow into the pond because then you'll have bacterial issues and it really would make a big mess. Is, so, yeah. is the house occupied? I, I, I yeah, I believe somebody, somebody was there when we did the site walk. They didn't come out, but we could hear them in the house. So. Yeah, we had knocked on the door and nobody answered. Okay. So, yeah, so at this point, um, I, and I'd also recommend, Matt, that you follow up in seven days to make sure that this is happening. All right. Because unfortunately, at that point, if it's not, then we will, um, at our next meeting, start in instituting fines. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mr. Mr. I got a signature. Yes. I believe we've probably notified the Board of Health. We have. It's also a question, how do they ever receive an occupancy permit if we have people living in that? That would seem like that's a Board of Health issue. I mean, the, it's not something that we can take up. We oh, notify we the Board of Health when we start. It's, it's also, not our issue. I would also say hi to the, uh, the building inspector and yeah. saying, how did they ever get an occupation? See, we all, might have an illegal occupation. Building, so. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, at this point, Tim, it sounds like you're definitely going to work to try to alleviate the issues that we're concerned with right now, and then uh, yes. we can get the engineer moving in the right direction so that you can get the septic system in and get the problem fixed. I, um, before this whole notice of intent thing came to my knowledge, yep. I was told that the perm was good and ready to be picked up. Mm -hmm. I just owed like 200 bucks, but apparently that's not the case anymore. No, the that permit is good. That could with the Board of Health, but that's it's not It's just still us. sitting there on issue. Okay, but... So you didn't pick it up, in other words. Right, no, no, I, I get that part, but the, are we now not doing anything until he, he comes up with the notice of intent, or is that completely aside from that? Um, he's got to do the notice of intent first now. Okay, so now the permit's not ready to be picked up. You can pick up the permit, it's just a matter of not being able to do the work because you still have to file the notice of intent. You can get a building you can get a building permit tomorrow to do something else, it doesn't relieve your responsibility on this end. Okay. All right. So I need to tell or whatever you talk you talk to him and I'll I spoke to him, you might want to reinforce this with him. Okay. I guess I'm gonna to have to. Yeah. Very good. So so just to be pretty clear, make sure the applicant is whatever permits he picks up. No work can start until this notice of intent gets filed and we go through it. Yep. So you're aware of right. Yes. Did you want to memorialize it? I can finish writing it up tomorrow now that yep. I know the direction you, can, you guys you want to send go. it off to um, okay. Coach Smith. Yep. Sorry. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Dwyer. Um, one thing that I thought of as we were discussing this is if they have plans ready to go for the septic, uh, system and I don't know if the septic system sited within or outside of the buffer zone or not, um, but yeah, that, the tanks and the overland lines and the edge of the septic system are in hundred foot. Yeah. So my thought is even if this could be a, a multi-meeting um, uh, notice of intent, mm -hmm. but that would be one thing that uh, I would certainly be open to. Uh, uh, giving them permission to start on the work of installation mm -hmm. of the septic system yep. um, uh, prior to uh, the application being completed. Uh, you might be in the it, best it, interest of the wetland to do it, that. It, it, ah, it, no, it, do you have view, a contractor lined up for the septic, for the yes, installation that's, that's of the issue. And I, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but uh, when Mr. Griffey came to my house today at about 5 o'clock, mm -hmm. I showed he asked me you know, what the deal was because I guess somebody told him. I don't know who was there. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. But um, So I showed him and he just said, uh, if it was okay with other people, he would like to see something in the tank, like at least a, you know, the 1500 gallon tank acting as a ta tight tank mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, if you do get somebody lined up to do it mm -hmm. before our next meeting on the 2nd of May, mm -hmm. contact Matt, because he can give you an, an emergency issued permit to put the tank in. And okay. would just go over any erosion protection additional that would need to be installed prior to that. So if you stay in contact, contact with Matt, do you have the phone number for the office? I do. Okay. Yeah. So if you do get somebody lined up prior to the next meeting that has it and is ready to put it in, just let him know. Okay. Okay. So I'll call Jimmy Gareffi tomorrow. I don't know if he's coming in, but I can call his cell, talk to him about an emergency certification mm -hmm. to allow the work because mm -hmm. I think Todd has an excellent point. Yeah, that is a good point. If you do have somebody that can do it prior to the next meeting. Because, I mean, he's, if it's going to be multi-meeting and it's going to take a little bit for him to draw those plans, we don't want that thing dripping in yeah. like yeah. he's been doing. Exactly. So that's a good okay. point. Yep. 
All right, so at this point, I would recommend an enforcement order on the property to clean up the grading that's been done. Hey, within 50 feet, uh, keep us surprised of the installation of the tank, act as a tight tank to eliminate the over overland flow of affluent. And then give your engineer time to submit a notice of intent. And the enforcement action I'm issuing to Doug. Well, I mean, you would issue it to Tim, but I would make sure that Doug gets a copy of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, that's my recommendation. Do we have any other questions or comments? No. I support the chairman's recommendation. All right. Any questions or comments from the public? So what we're going to do is we're just issuing an enforcement order, which is basically just a violation notice. So that's on paper of what we've seen, what we've agreed to tonight. And then your engineer will file a notice of intent for a permit to work in the 100 foot buffer zone for the wetland area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yes, Mr. Luck. Um, it, it just, uh, you know, when we see a plan, um, really confirm that this pond really looks like this. I don't, you know, this, this line looks kind of <clears throat> awfully straight to me for that pond. <laughs> so it is, we really pretty, need it is pretty. I mean, I, I do it's agree that it's the right. Yeah, the engineer is the one that drew it. So when it's an when was the plan drawn? February 26th. Yeah. So yeah, so he should just verify that. Yeah, just but, verify that that's really what it looks like. Mm -hmm. There it is. But he does have a little bit of work to do on the plan. All right, so I'll accept a motion to issue an enforcement order. So that's moved. Described. So moved. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. The motion is second out of the discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 And so at this point, you know what to do if you have any questions at all. Matt's Monday through Thursday in the office. Okay. So feel, feel, feel free to give him a call. He's always available to help. Thank you, sir. And at this point, we'll continue this hearing until May 2nd, at which point we'll have a better idea of when uh, your engineer thinks he can get the application forward and to see where we're at if we have started to work on that step to tank. I All right. Would, I would hope that would be done. That would. Okay, that would be great. I would definitely alleviate some of the fears, especially from Board of Health. So, and you said that the permit was, you verified with Andrea that the permit was. She issued. showed it to me. Okay. So we, she so she at least had the permit, so that's all set. Okay. All right, so make sure that you get your Board of Health permit. And if it has to be filed with a note, um, registry of deeds, because I know our permits have to be filed with a registry of deeds. So just follow everything that they tell you to do for their permit, and then your engineer will contact us with our permit. Yes, sir. So. All right, so at that point, I'll accept a motion to continue this until May 2nd. So moved. There's a motion, we have a second. All those, any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All right, so we'll be talking in the next couple of weeks, see how things are going. Thank All right, thank you. thank you. Good luck. That's the enforcement order for Is that plan bank. I uh, think I handed the plan. Actually, I'm going to get a copy of the name just so we have that one for the record. Maple Parkway. Ah, that's a jack on the way down. Color it. Oh, shoot. No, everything on one page. Glass? <laughs> <laughs> They're harsh. <laughs> Somebody's got to keep you honest. I just like busting on all right. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended in the Town of Lunenburg, Wetland Protection and Municipal Bylaw is a public meeting on a notice of intent by Kenneth Tooley for the construction of a single-family home at 54 Maple Parkway. Um, let me get some pictures here. This is uh, an existing lot that has a trailer on it, a uh, bright pink trailer. Beautiful. Classic. Yes, I was definitely dated. Uh, I guess I didn't have one. Uh, but anyway, uh, the trailer, I had Matt out here back in September when we were doing the testing, uh, knowing that we were going to be in front of you one of these days and talk about what we can do. Uh, 
the woman that lived here uh, went into a rest home, I believe, uh, beginning of last summer. Family came in, sold the parcel to Mr. Tully. Uh, existing cesspool somewhere in this area here. We did a couple of uh, holes and some perk tests. We have a new system designed here with a retaining wall out along the road line. Uh, we're going to remove that trailer and put a two bedroom house here. There's the, the trailer's two bedrooms, and we're proposing a two bedroom house. We're not increasing. Uh, there is town water. We're going to relocate it over here. Uh, we're going to take out all the impervious area that's on the site. We've calculated it, and we're actually uh, replacing it with 1,216 square feet of impervious area. So it's a, a net loss of impervious area to the site. Where the trailer was, and up through this area here, we have detail of the planting scheme. Um, in the back, it suckled the wetland for a second. There is a man-made ditch. So basically, this is the back of Walmart. You have the, the giant slope coming down. Man-made ditch. Once it crosses this property line, there's a structure that it goes into, and then it goes underground all the way to the other side of White Street. So Matt looked at it. Uh, I think there are some pictures in that wetland report mm -hmm. that we gave you today. Um, the EP's only comment was that they shouldn't close the wetland report, which is what they did. Yep. Okay. So that was the only comment. So basically, we're going to clean up the site mm -hmm. and just replace two bedrooms for two bedrooms mm -hmm. uh, and give you some representative area back in here. There is an existing shed on the other side of this. Yep. Uh, we've got notes on this plan. It's going to be hand removed. Okay. No machines to be crossing over that ditch. Mm -hmm. uh, take it all apart and then uh, rake that area out, clean it up, and then it'll be a uh, woodland seed mix uh, that will go on it. Okay. Uh, it's a uh, New England conservation wildlife mix that we intend to. So, okay. Sir, I, I, I was not able to go on the sidewalk, so is the wetlands the ditch? Pretty much, yes. Right along well, the edge. It does kind of go out towards the back, but they never delineated the far edge of the wetland. But it, it does flatten out in there. There's a BBW so. that goes way back in that part of the lot. Yep. So, there is so a, there's more than just a man made structure that, that's wetlands? Yes. So I think right. over time what Dang. has happened is the man made ditch filled in. Yep. And the overland flow just broadened out. Okay. So as there was a house and a park and a, the driveway, it went all the way back to where half the house is. And then it just flattened out in the back. So it definitely. Has BBW that goes out the back side, but they didn't delineate it. So we only delineated the we just delineated side. the front side. I mean, if I had to venture just to educate it, you're walking basically a meander and out like this. <laughs> I can't believe it just threw out its plan. <laughs> With a sharpie, no less. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure he remembered it, Matthew. I can see it this way. They could black mark. I wanted to make sure that that was memorialized because I'm going to have a recommendation that goes along with it. So there's a method to my madness. Okay. Well, we get to say. All right. Why don't you explain why you? I think that back end of that wetland should be delineated. This side here. Yep. That should be delineated. Uh, and the reason. Because we need to have that put on a plan because if you build this house and then you sell it, um, I need to be able to show whoever buys this property where that wetland is in the back. Because somebody's going to be tempted to want to do stuff in that back area and they're going to start clearing it out. I had a lot similar to this in another part of town and the same thing started happening. People just started going in back. And the same thing, same thing that's happening on Reservoir Road. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking for some type of a stronger memorialization of what the resource areas are back there. It's a very small section, um, as you could see by my Sharpie that I can face the plan with. Um, uh, that's a pretty accurate location. We'll submit this at the other <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Matt, could you draw in the boulders, too? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, now that you've explained that, you know, I don't have any issue with that, and I think that's a, you know, a fair argument knowing what clients can do. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, I, well, I understand that the water flowing part of it is a man-made ditch. Mm -hmm. There's a BVW that's evolved that goes right up to that man-made portion. Correct. So, yeah. you know, 
you've got a shed that's already back there. You've got an old footbridge that's going to be used to access that shed that's already back there. And that will be removed. You're going to remove that? All when, crossings yeah, will be removed. So you're going to remove the shed. Yeah. Okay, so now you're having... That shed is coming out. Okay, so now you're, you're doing some removal, even though it may be done by hand, and we've got it near a wetland resource area. Because a wetland resource area, you're going to be within 100 feet of the back side of that, too. Okay. That's why. Now, there are some down trees, kind of right on the edge of the, the wetland area. Um, large diameter trunks, probably you know, 18 inches or so. Uh, I don't know if you're going to leave those in place or not. Um, they must have came down over the winter time. I haven't been here since September. Oh yeah, October. no, there's been a lot of so because would, of the high water well, table. I, I think there's some. Most of them were older. I don't think they were this winter, were they? Yeah, uh, I didn't look at it. Yeah, there was some I, of them. I, was, that yeah, I mean, there's a good. Uh, myself, I would rather just leave once the wetlands delineated. Leave it in state. I think once they start cleaning it up then that just leads the new homeowner to think that they can clean it up. And yeah. I think I would much rather just leave it in state. Are stay. they all on the other side, Matt? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that could be worded in the order conditions mm -hmm. that nothing, any fell trees be left alone mm -hmm. in natural state. When, when you review the, the wetland, I would just, we didn't go on that side of the lot. I, I did. I don't know if any of those fell trees may be diverting water or, or, or you know, causing additional expansion of that well, wetland or not. Well, we can get it delineated when we take another walk at this point. Yep. Okay. How long do you think it'll take you to get it delineated and on a plan and submitted? Um, I'd say probably uh, by the end of next week. Okay. So I was going to say, who did the delineation originally? Uh, our office did. Yeah, I know. Which it, was it? It was either Brandon or Seth. I was going to say, um, I think it's Seth because he sent me the report. Well, Seth, Seth should be able to do this lickety split. So. Well, I mean, based on schedules and stuff, yeah. But it's, it's the field part of it, going out and locating it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So All right. well, now would be a good time to do it before everything grows in. Exactly. Because you can see the hydrology. Yep. Other than the wetland delineation, are there any other questions or comments from commissioners? Um, just to let the commission know, this has already been to the Board of Health and it does have an approval through them. Okay. Andrew did verify that for me today. Okay. Seems like, an, to me, an overall improvement on the site yeah. Yeah. based on what was there before. I agree, but like I was saying before, with the constraints of the lot and the wetland yeah. in the back, no, I, I want to make sure that we have that memorialized. Yep. Yeah. All right, no, I don't see many other uh, options out there. You're lucky you could fit a septic system in there. Uh, yeah, barely. Yep. Yeah. That's why I was I was telling I was like, I don't know how the heck you're going to fit a septic system in here. He's like, yeah, at some point, I there was, was a uh, sewer main that was proposed coming down from that other development mm. on the back. Yep. Uh, whether that's still going to happen or not, I have no idea. No, I think they pulled the application. So, if that were the case, we, you know, Mm -hmm. to board health that we tie in, you know, within six months. Yeah, no, no I think they pulled that permit altogether. So. Who pulled the permit? Oh, well, withdrew. Did they withdraw? Not that I Off Northfield Road? I don't yeah. recall. They may have. I think they did. Yeah. But, but, you know, the interesting thing is, um, I noticed the water department was doing an extensive amount of work out there last fall. Uh, yeah, actually, I think it started during the summer because we were weaving in and out of them. Doing okay. the, uh, yeah, they replaced the water main Yeah, going up Maple Parkway. All right. Well, if there's no other questions from the commission, any questions from the public on... Where are we? 54, 54 Maple Parkway. All right, seeing none, and with permission from the applicant, we'll continue this until May 2nd. And if you wouldn't good. mind, just notify the office when you get the delineation done so we can maybe take another walk out there on the, the Saturday prior and see the blue flags and get a better idea. Will do. All right. I'll accept a motion to continue to May 2nd. So moved. A motion, we have a second. Second. A motion, a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 So make sure you show Greg my wonderful artwork. I will. <laughs> if you need a job doing rendering now, <laughs> I, I was going to say, me render? I could screw up a stick figure. I'm amazed I drew that that good. It's <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Forward, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. In the Town of Lunenburg, Wetland Protection and Municipal Bylaws, is a public meeting on a notice of intent by Madison Homes for construction of a single family home at 63 Prospect Street. So it appears you have outlasted our audience. Wesley knows how to clear a room. Yep. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks. Are you tonight, Wes? Maybe. <laughs> 63 prospects. Cross right here. Okay. Down here, maybe four houses is almost a rope. Yep. Like while I'm out. Good evening for the record, Wesley Cliss with Nevada Associates. Ken Matson from Matson Homes is next to me. Yes, thank you. As you see the project site is uh, 63 Prospect Street. And the uh, plan here would be uh, being crossroads, across the street, the intersection. Again, the St. Lunds Road a little further down uh, the street. The reason we're in front of you this evening is to work within our buffer zone uh, on the plan that uh, you have in front of you. We show the buffer zone in the uh, darker green color, the uh, no touch zone, the no disturbance, the 50 foot uh, no build zone, and also the 100 foot buffer zone shown in the plans. Uh, obviously, we're not doing any work within your. 100 foot uh, no disturbance zone. We're not doing, uh, you know, proposing any impervious surface in your 50 foot no uh, build zone. We are showing a small portion of site grading to uh, accommodate the proposed house uh, within that 50 foot no build zone, but we are out of that 30 foot no disturbance zone. Uh, obviously, uh, if you see at the plan, about half of the proposed house is within the 100 foot buffer zone. Uh, the driveway is proposed out of the buffer zone. Uh, we tried keeping everything uh, as tucked close to the property line as we could with regards to the uh, offsets to that side of the sites. Uh, in the red, we do show a extension of a uh, culvert that actually currently runs under Prospect Street. We're working with the uh, Public Works Department on extending that uh, culvert uh, past this property um, such that it doesn't impact the culvert that we have in front of you. Um, and also we do show a permanent drain and uh, discharging uh, within that 50 foot uh, no build zone. We do show straw wattles and sill fence as roach control measures. Uh, obviously we'll be doing some uh, land clearing to, to you know, construct this home, but uh, out of this uh, almost three acre piece of property, uh, you know, we're trying to minimize the amount of disturbance that we can to, to construct this house, keep it as close to the street as we can and as close to that uh, the easterly property line as much as we can to, uh, to get this in without uh, impacting the wetlands as, as little as we can. I think in the notice we did, uh, I know something that the commission has asked for in the past, we did give you the, the amount of disturbance in the buffer zone, which is uh, approximately 13,000 square feet of uh, work within the buffer zone, uh, within the 100 foot buffer zone. And so we did include that in the uh, narrative and the, uh, the notice of intent. Um, and that's again, the project in a nutshell. Pretty straightforward, uh, single family house uh, on at 63 Prospect Street. The dotted line here around the um, drain line, that's an easement? Correct, there'll be an easement, uh, yep, an easement given to the town of Lunenburg. And so uh, my understanding, Ken can correct me, but I believe the town's gonna give Ken the uh, materials to install, and then Ken will do the actual labor mm -hmm. to install that pipe. Okay. Um, is the agreement that uh, Ken and uh, Jack Rodequins has on on this? Because again, like I said, it's a, a discharge of the town has on on the property that Mr. Matson has, mm -hmm. uh, and that there's kind of a, a gentleman's agreement that this will be done to kind of help everybody involved here. So, so that pipe now discharges near the door. Is that Correct. Yeah, Correct. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's real short right I'm here. Angling towards the house a little bit. 
That, that's the that's the extent of exactly, but it, it directs the discharge right into the mm -hmm. uh, where the where the house is going. Mm -hmm. um, again, uh, the pipe really needs to be. That was that area we saw reconstructed, anyways. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's an older older pipe. No, that was the other side. At the end of the day, it's it's down here. Yeah. That was down there. Yeah, that flows into this pipeline mm -hmm. system. Is there mm -hmm. maintenance required on? <laughs> no, so what we did is uh, we sized the rip rep pad uh, actually kind of, you know, uh, for the worst case scenario, which is on your storm. Um, and that's the intent there is to minimize any erosion. So there really shouldn't be uh, any maintenance required. Maybe just a site inspection once in a while just to make sure the pipe's not clogged more than anything. Yeah. Um, and it's more on the, the uh, northerly side of, of Prospect Street. But, um, but again, like now, you know, you can see the notes that we had uh, you know, partially buried now. Uh, we're a little questionable about even the structural stability of that pipe because it's an older, older culvert. So uh, again, like I said, it's going to be an improvement for what's there, for the long term for the town. What should are you prepare, proposing to remove those existing sheds? It isn't being proposed at this time. I know it was something that uh, I think Anthony had asked Ken about, and I, yeah, the, the, I he was going to I think take a look at the structural. Yeah, uh, if they weren't going to. One thing, if we go back to. Back outside of where we're at. Well, they're shown here in your limit of work. Yes, so yeah. that's what we, we left them on there for right now because we weren't. Sure. I know it's something that we have. Yeah, you know, look at them, maybe make a judgment. One looks like it's good, something looks good enough okay. to make a story shit or something. And yeah, we kind of looked at them, they didn't. All right. Yeah, I, oh. I took a glance at them I think last fall when I started looking at this property, but I haven't really went mm -hmm. in there and really looked at them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, our only concern is if you know if they're altered at all. They're inside the hundred foot buffer, so they would need to be filed for. If somebody was going to change the size or put foundations under room or footings or any sort of activity like that, so and yep. and they don't look like they've been used for years and years. So I would question their uh, structural integrity. So you may want to just amend. That you might be removing those. You want to take, a, you want to take mean, them out? Yeah. If you're clearing out that far, anyways. You want to take them out then? Yeah, we we'll take them out. Okay, so we'll just amend. If you want, Matt can add that yep. into the minutes. It will remove the sheds from the site. So we're taking the sheds out of them. Yeah, sheds are gone. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Mr. just to help clarify, possibly in here. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing essentially they're grading everything within the green square, right? And and they're regrading it and flattening it out a little bit. It looks like, but why do we need to go inside the 50-foot zone again? So there's a small portion here that basically get the grade of the house to work, and then we're basically grading to basically, you know, we're looking to make a usable backyard. Yeah. In the rear there, and so we would. And actually, I think if the sheds are going to be removed, the clearing may be developed or reduced a little bit to something in this area here. Yeah, I, I just don't understand why we would need to go in there. The contours are two foot. So yeah, so two foot contours. Yeah. yeah, so you're looking and it's at. Very minimal. Yeah, and so, so uh, very minimal amount of fill, but we're trying to make a usual backyard for somebody to. You know, yeah. So you're essentially saying you're. So we're, we're looking at a 50 foot. So by the time you end up getting to the clearing, 50 to 60 foot backyard. Plus you have the daylight can, that perimeter drain. Can, can we right. perhaps so that's, that's the other thing too is we do have keep the limit of work at the fifty foot no structure? Um, I mean it looks like most of your grading with the exception of this little two foot contour here. Yeah. And that still gives you a backyard that's at least as wide of a, as a house. She where he's looking at Kevin. Are you? Yeah, I think we were looking at this little sliver right in here. Basically, yeah. I guess I look at it hopefully. Affecting a whole lot, right? Yeah, just, just keep this as your limit of work. This line right here. This line right here, as you're saying, this is where yeah, we're at for our limit right now, where we're working, where we're going to be yep. creating yep. right can in we, that area. Can we bring it to here? I, I have a slightly different view. Okay. If we flatten the backyard out, that's going to slow runoff uh, off of the house. So we've created impervious, but now we're slowing uh, any runoff that may come off the house into the wetland by flattening the, the grade there. I think I think I'd support it as as submitted. Yeah, I, I guess I don't have an issue with with the way it's submitted right now. Uh, I don't have any issue with the way it's submitted. Just to be clear, so the dotted line, the green, is is the limited work 
So yeah, so we show proposed straw waddles and sill fence is basically the limit of work is what we're showing. That's a 50 foot movement. That's right here. This is the dash line. This oh, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, dash line. the heavier so dash line, line. yes. So they're inside. Yeah, so we're in the, inside the 50 foot, no right. build, no, no impervious, we, 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 you know. Yeah, I, I, I would be in favor of keeping a limit of work at the 50 foot, no structure order. I mean, they're, they're looking for 13,000 square feet of work with inside the buffer zone. That's going to limit it by 10%, maybe, so they're only going to get 11,000 square feet. I think that's more than enough. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the, the grading, it's the trees and everything else that's going to come out. Right. So, yeah. I, I, I would support that, too. Yeah. And then the, the sheds are outside, so it won't affect the removal of the sheds. Right. So. so you're suggesting that we do not do anything within 50 feet? Is that what? Yes. Right? Move the limit of work. The limit of work where it intersects the 50 will remain we'll at there. the 50. Okay. Yeah. Would be my suggestion. I would support that and keep the vegetation. Yeah. Yeah. Is your intent to to have this be lawn? Yeah, that would be backyard lawn. I just I, I that's part of the narrowest part of our lawn back there is that point right there. Or I mean, you still have a 60 or 80 foot wide backyard. What's that? If we bring it to the 50, you're still going to have at least 20 feet around the corner. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would note that we had three members say they had no problem with it as submitted we had three members who said uh, they'd like to see it brought out to the 50 and we have one member who hasn't said anything and I'd like to hear from that person <laughs> good point good point <laughs> Well, personally, I agree we should bring it back to the 50. That looks like, I was trying to do the <laughs> measurements very crudely over here. That's what it most five, bringing it back, what, five feet, roughly? Sure. I don't know. Five, five, to five to 15 feet. Yeah. yeah. 15 feet. Yeah. Like, yeah. We'd, be, we'd be cutting from 30 to 15 feet, yeah. basically, is what. But so we'd have 15 of. Yeah, like width wide from the, for the strip. Not lengthwise, but yeah, essentially. Yep, and so that's where, uh, yeah, yeah, as the client huge. was saying, the narrowest point is going to be 15 feet. Yeah, but, right. it's not a huge, huge space, so I'd agree bringing it back to the 50. Okay. I guess my point is, is it's, it's such a, it's not a huge space, it's not a huge, so then why not leave it the way we're short? That's well, because of course we're the conservation commission, so we want to see as little development as possible. And and, and, and smart and development. And it was it's, four to three. Yeah, and it was four to three. Fifteen yeah. feet. Yeah. 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 We we were talking all night. We've had a no build for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's well. That's, that's, no, no. And so yeah, we 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 abide by your no build. We're not yeah. putting any. We're not no, putting yeah, any impervious. Yeah. 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 We're not talking putting anything in your thirty foot. No, no disturbance. Yeah. It's yeah, your no structure. Yeah. Sorry, I misspoke. It's okay. So again, this is, I think they're working within our bylaws. They're just grading within the 50, which right. is perfectly with, in accordance with our bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know why we, we deny it when there are many, many other uh, applicants that come before the board and, and we allow it. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, e even in this hearing, we've allowed it. Right. Well, there's no, we don't see any overwhelming need to disturb that area. And it is within 100 feet, 50 feet, sure. And we don't, uh, why would you take the vegetation out? Why would you do those things that uh, Are you suggesting, Jack, that we should, we should expand our, um, our no disturbance zone out to 50 feet? Is that what you have? No, I think if it's not necessary, then we, do we ask them that they don't? We can ask well, them. it is necessary, they want it. Hmm. Well, we asked them not to. And again, I mean, it's on a case by case basis. I mean, we've dealt with areas that are 5,000 feet in total. Yeah. You know, they've, they've got 13,000 feet of buffer zone that they're disturbing at this point. 15 feet isn't a lot of room to bring machines around there to work and stuff. Bring my boat in and out of that 15 feet all the time. Oh, is that? I could bring a boat in. <laughs> you know, well, I know, but the size supply. machine we're going to have there's going to be probably 13 feet wide. Excavator or something, you know, when you. But, but I wouldn't want to extend the meeting, or I'm not going to be. I mean, hey, that's what you yeah. people want, and that's what the vote is. I'm. Yeah. You know, okay. No, that's what we're asking for. So. I do. 
I guess my thing is you guys have created that 50 foot no disturb. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of bothers me. And both times I've come before the board, I've had to stick with not building, not disturbing the 50 foot. It's, well, it's, that, it's that, a, that last a, house, I mean, that was justified because of that slope. Yeah, yeah that, that's a, not fair. It's, yeah. it's a 30 foot no disturb. I mean, 30, 30 foot no and 50 foot no structure. No yeah. structure. Right. And the, the bylaw does allow them to adjust those zones on a case by case basis, yeah. which was the reason why we did it over on West Street. I was the one that actually initially called for that, and the rest of the board agreed with my recommendation. Now, you can okay, request them. It, it appears that it's four to three against as submitted, but you can request uh, us to vote on the plan as submitted. By the isn't that what you'd be doing anyway, to vote on it, or? Well, well we're, we are asking, or many members are asking for a change, just to follow the 50 foot as your limit of work. Which again, I didn't, from my eyes, you're asking for 13,000 square feet of disturbance in the buffer zone, and we'd like to see you limit it to 11,000 square feet of disturbance. So it is an area that we do have jurisdiction over. And, and members have questioned the need to go as close to the 30 foot no disturbance line as you do have it. Okay. Mr. Rabbit. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Tommy, I did not go out on site, first of all, so I didn't see it. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything to stop those residents from as soon as we get to put in for them to hack into it and move it? Is there that much of a slope that, that would stop them from moving it in? No. So, is there a compromise potential here where we're saying, okay, you could take that, but you know what? Put boulders all the way through so they don't go any further than that. Um, but, what he's, but what he's asking for is grading. I mean, the grading, sh sh you know, oh, so the, the, so the, the solid line is, are, are, is grading. Proposed grading. Right. Proposed we were, grading. We are showing proposed grading oh, in, in that, that case. I take that compromise back. Grading filling because this is yeah, a 16 a line here. They're looking yeah. to bring the 16 line down to yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. And, and, that, and that's my point. He's and talking about to increase their backyard. Yeah. yeah. All right. Maybe so you take your point back is I was offering boulders as a demarcation point, but were you grading creating a difference? Yeah, I don't want to go near that. Well, it's not going to. Well, we're grading, but it's not going to create a. It's not creating like a, a three to one slope where it's going to be very obvious and where mm -hmm. uh, you know thirty foot or fifty foot or all that's going to you know there's it, no real yeah. demarcation on the site after the grading's done because everything's going to be relatively smooth. Mm -hmm. There's no real sudden change of grade there. No, we're, we're, it's, it's you're, it, he's a two foot contour. It's not. Yeah, you know, no, it's yeah. relatively flat. So uh, nothing's no, going to really flat. stop them from slowly. It, well, that's what, that's what we're going to do. We know they do that. We know everybody does. So, so I guess we're, we're asking would you if you're okay that was that something you would still want in lieu of that? I mean, that's... I haven't thought that far yet. I'm yeah. thinking that I like boulders. I don't like boulders. I know. I just like to see them stop at a 50 foot. Yeah. But <laughs> but so, I, I think that there's so more boulder, than enough clearing yeah. in there. My mind, boulders kind of tell people you can't go any further than that. And if we should happen to cruise on by and we see that it pushed me are hideous. Mm. Well, we have the first one on there that okay, we discussed. Okay, I'm, I'm back to my point. We'll stop at 50. Right. Are you in favor of keeping your limit of work at 50 feet? Yeah. Okay. Except, Matt, if you just notate that they've amended the proposal to uh, keep their limit of work at 50 feet. And if you can just submit us a plan yep. with that. Yeah. Yeah, I already have that. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Um, any questions or comments from the public? <laughs> Wait to the camera. <laughs> we did get one call from a butter. So. Okay. Hmm? I do see so the we comment. did get one call from a butter. Did you? Yeah, I actually I sent her a PDF plan. All right. All of those, I will accept a motion to approve with the amendment that the limit of work will be at the 50 foot. So moved. No structure zone. Demarcation. We have a motion or we have a second? Second. second. Motion is second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 You have an approval. All right. Thank you. Yeah. 
you can submit the plan to Matt. Yep. Get that over here. Okay. Yep. He's enough. One of these for your final Matt. All right. Good evening, gentlemen. And moving forward with current business. Uh, any update on 571 Chase Road, Matt? No, I have okay. a spring coming. I, I gotta check to see if his seating pops 654 up. 654 was that was we already issued. Issued. worked on that. That was the um, one I issued the fines on. Yeah. But we did approve it, so once mm -hmm. he's done everything, then his. Uh, I'm gonna remove it from the violation section. Okay. Uh, Shady Point structure moving within buffer zone. Um, I have a meeting arranged for next week with uh, Mr. Wilson to go over and photograph the um, okay. areas, and then I'm going to have him follow. Uh, did you guys want an RDA on that? I mean, he's just basically he put it on boards. He didn't even put it on blocks. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? Is um, it? But essentially, what what happened was Carl gave me a call because he had noticed that some of the, like a shed structure had been moved around, and when I met with Ron Wilson about it. He told me that they habitually move stuff around um, because they're on boards. So I looked through the aerial photos, and lo and behold, you could see some things moving around between sheds, picnic tables, things like that. So what I've asked him to do is to meet with me on site so we could go over and photograph those areas, go over where he wants to move things in the next few years, what he may be planning to do, and then put it as a scope in an RDA. There's no excavation involved. He's just simply moving structures around. They're small, little, small. So, are, are, yeah, but there's a big difference between the shed and the picnic table. I mean, so we're talking sheds. I'm talking sheds. Okay, because picnic tables are temporary structures. Even if the sheds are temporary structures, he's he's moving. You know, he said he kept them about 60 feet away, um, but I want to verify that with my own measurements. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, at this point, if they're moving outside of the 50-foot no structure zone, an RDA is fine. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, if they're above ground and they're just sitting on the surface, as long as they're outside of the no structure zone. New business land exchange. We're um, doing a site walk on that tomorrow at one o'clock. Okay. Maybe. 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 <laughs> just wear a raincoat. I'll not be able to make that section. What's that? I will not be able to make it. Okay, at this point, Kenny, are you able to? I'm planning on being there. Okay, Bob, are you? I'll, I'll be there. All right, and I was, well, we were the ones that were original. Unfortunately, we can't have a, another person. Right. We'd have to publicize the meeting. Um, so we'll meet tomorrow and go from there. And I think it's just to finalize some sort of agreement that can be brought to the town meeting floor. So we can amend it at that point. I would just comment that originally the meeting was scheduled for one, um, and Brandon was going to be there. And now all of a sudden it was moved up to 12:30, and Brandon's going to have trouble making that. And I just assumed meet at one. So Brand, you know, because originally we were going to meet on site mm -hmm. um, at one, and they said, well, let's meet ahead of time at the office at 12:30. I mean, Brandon's chair of the Open Space Committee, I think, is, I, I just assume, wait, but that's just me. Well, I could be there at 1230 to start. Yeah. And I'll talk really slow to get there. <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, just, uh, Mr. Luck. So, it, it sounds like there's going to be some discussion regarding providing some guidance to whoever's going to be negotiating this deal. Is that what I just heard? So, basically, the, the official negotiations happen between the landowner and the Board of Selectmen. Right. Uh, they are working on the direction that we give them. Mm -hmm. So they're not out to just swap the land right. willy-nilly. Right. It would be something presented that the Conservation Commission would be behind. Mm -hmm. So so, so even though it's technically not us negotiating, we're the ones that are driving the negotiation. Right. With uh, the current landowner. The process here, is the commission going to get to hear what guidance the board is going to get, or is it just this group of three people that are going to provide the guidance, and the commission never gets to 
Oh, no, we will come back here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's my intent is to bring it back here. Because yeah, put, 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 put forth an offer for an official to the yeah. landowner for what we're looking for to swap. Direction. Right. Yeah. Now, I mean, basically, we're looking for the access from the street and the current trail that's in place. Right. Unfortunately, there's no moving the trail because that was one app, one offer that he would move the trail. But unfortunately, you're moving it into the riparian zone, you're moving it into the buffer zone, so there's absolutely no reason to be reconstructing the, pit, the trail. So, and it, it behooves both parties, us, we get the trail, clear title, access to it, and the applicant gets one lot set of two, yeah. or the dividing piece between the two lots. So, It'll be it'll be a face to face at that point. So I think most of it's just been email and ethereal. And Brandon made a wonderful map mm -hmm. yeah, with yeah, uh, yeah. two foot contours. Mm -hmm. Wow! Well, uh, Hickory Hills information for harvest suck, for suction harvesting. Um, they they want to come into this second meeting in May. Okay. Based on email conversations that we've had, so we're going to delay that one. Okay. Uh, and, and that's for their current suction harvesting for their reporting. The current suction harvesting? Yeah. Don't they currently have a permit for suction harvesting? Yes, they do. Okay. Yeah. So this is their reporting? Uh, no, actually, they want to come before us because they want to do something a little bit different with the suction harvesting, and their order of conditions requires them to appear before us to discuss that. Okay. Have you heard that before? What's that? Don't you read your emails? No, I'm not trying to read any of those emails. Don't. don't, don't okay, don't. small town forest update. <laughs> I did meet out with Jack Rodrickens to review the bidding process. Uh, in his estimation, the size of the project will not need to go through DPW procurement. Uh, he didn't really seem to want to get too involved in our bidding process. He offered any help that we would need. Uh, basically come up with a design for the gate, come up with somebody to put it in, put that out to bid, best business practice. And he also recommended on the parking lot that's there, fill the rest of the parking area that was constructed with uh, that two inch or two to four inch or four to five inch gravel, which will fill in and pack in nicely. So, and one other thing that I did a walk out through there that I'd like to propose is if we try to get a bid for hydro seeding of a butterfly wildflower mix in the open areas where the landing is. Hydra seed the non road portions of it, and then as it goes up the hill, you know, the canopy has been opened up, so just a three foot swath on either side to try to get some native wildflowers growing in there as well. So I, I think that would be a for small dollars a, a big benefit up through there. Awesome. But other than that, I walked the road, it was one little wet spot, and that was it. I think they had done a great job. The road is far more passable now than it was before. Right. Before it was, you know, deep ruts. So did we they definitely want to get a gate because you can easily get up there with just a Subaru. Yeah. Did with they throw some riprap in that area, that area that looked like it was starting to cut itself through and create a ravine right along the road? You go up the hill a little bit, you're in about 100, 150 yards. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was on the right hand side. We'd seen yeah, when they went. I didn't really notice much up there. Everything really? seemed to be, be pretty great. secure. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really notice any erosion problems. Now, if we were to, as part of a volunteer project, go in and level that trail, would that have? Would we have to come? Would they have to come in before this committee to propose that uh, they fill in some of the ravines and things Certainly. like that? They would. No, I mean, it's our property. We yeah. Would, as the landowners and be the caretakers of it. Yeah, I know we've been Anybody past that done work. That. Okay. okay. Yeah. Come in for that, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. What's the, I guess what's the next step in getting those sort of you know, talked about three things: the hydro seating, the gate, and the parking area. What so we need to do I can that? start working with Matt if everybody agrees on the hydro seating bid, uh, the parking lot bid, and the only thing is trying to find a gate. A gate. Yeah. I, I spent a couple hours trying to find gates, and I can find some really pretty pictures of gates. But <laughs> can we? Yeah, maybe we can reach out to to one of the guys at um, DCR, DCR State Foresters or something and see. I'm sure they get those gates like somewhere. Like we just need to figure out where they get them. Okay. But yeah, I think that's that's great. We need to keep moving forward. With yes. This. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Just, um, Thanks. Very on the bid for the parking lot, since mm -hmm. they're going to have a machine out there to do that grading, would it make sense to also include some of uh, uh, trail work along the area that they grade, clean up brush and stuff like that? Um, 
included in that so they can go up and you know collect all the brush from the machine and bring yeah. it back down to uh, yeah honestly we should probably take a walk out there a few yeah. members and just kind of see i mean I, I walked up the main roadway to the top where the logging mm -hmm. actually started and yes there's debris on either side of the road mm -hmm. but then you kind of let your eye follow out into the the woodland and there is debris littering the entire area right so i i can't say that we're going to benefit or the environment's going to benefit from trying to take away what little brush is there mm -hmm. i think a season or two of leaf litter is going to drop on top of that and it's going to naturalize right in yeah. so I, I, from what I saw, really wouldn't be in favor of doing much else, at least on the main roadway. I did not get up into mm -hmm. the new logging trails. Mm -hmm. You know, those are supposed to be walking paths, but that's definitely something we may need to do a little walking on just to make sure that at least somebody can walk through there. Yep. And, and sign it and come up with a good plan for it. So <clears throat> I think once spring finally gets here, we can take a walk up there. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it's someday. <laughs> yeah. All right, any other questions on small town at this point? That's great. Mr. Okay. Yeah, so if you don't mind, maybe contact Mike Downey or any of your contacts at DCRC if they have an idea. Uh, no certificate of compliance, uh, no extension permits, approval of minutes. Um, I got the uh, April 6 minutes from Carl. I just haven't had a chance to go through the edits yet. Okay. Um, not April 6, I'm sorry, March 21st. Okay. The April 6, I'm almost finished. I'm ready to distribute. I'll distribute it next week with these minutes. Okay. So we'll have those. So we can approve all of our minutes. Yep. Okay. Um, that wasn't there in February? February almost approved at the last meeting. They approved meeting. at the last meeting. Oh, they approved okay. it at the last meeting. Okay. Um, Mr. I would note that um, in the March 21st minutes, mm -hmm. um, in the section we're about on Scott Benjamin, uh, the applicant was given until the end of the summer to remove uh, the two docks, and that's not noted in the minutes, and I think it should be. Yes. So I, I believe we said after the season and, and the next drawdown we were going to. The next drawdown. Right. Okay. It, and that's not noted at all in the minutes, and I think it should be. Agreed. Um, that actually is clarified, and it, it's going to be clarified in the April 6 minutes because I had some confusion. I, I understand. But we discussed it in yeah i'll add it um but i'm going to also mention it in the april 6 minutes too okay. because i had some confusion in the request to clarification um, there's a sentence that doesn't make any sense it says and explain the plan and why it was necessary for the property to be built period e also narrated to drain the jobs is to correct past drainage i'm not i'm not sure what that sentence meant it says that um uh it makes no mention, you know, Mark Birch appeared on behalf of the owners and he narrated the work done uh, according to design. And basically, we told um, Mark that we thought what he was, he, he could do, he continued with the work he was planning, and uh, we'd stop the enforcement and take another look at the end of the summer. Um, and uh, it says here that Bob Peace noted we should encourage this type of remediation. What I said was that, in my opinion, the removal of down dead work by hand is not a regulated activity, is, is what I said. So I, I would just note those things in that minute. And I noticed afterwards that that's actually right in our standard order conditions, uh, that the removal of down dead work by hand is not a regulated, is, is allowed. And if, if, if one of, I'd like to see the edits to the minutes, you know, I appreciate that Carl, you know, goes through the minutes, um, you know, but I'd, l I'd l love to see, you know, what the edits were, you know, before, so, so I don't have to go back and like compare the original minutes to, and so. Because I track the changes from, I think she's requesting to send them forward the track change. Ones. Bingo, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Look at that, Matt. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Treasurer's report. None, except that I now learned just recently the actual name of the uh, Hollis Road account. It's the Hawes Gift Fund or something like that. <laughs> All right. Legal requests and updates. 
No, I'm the only thing I, I have a hearing on May 2nd in Fitchburg District Court. Okay. I'm going to be going over the particulars on that with Adam Coster on the 25th. And you're going to be a that's good, on the fine collection. You're going to be a good boy, so I don't hold you in contempt. So you're here for the meeting. <laughs> yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Hate to see that wild side come out. Well, it depends on whether or not I have my sharpie with me. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if the judge would be quite as happy as Jack Maloney's going to be, or would be. Well, I just think it's funny that you guys found that hilarious. Really, what he does with those plans after he's done with it, he takes it off the board and throws it away. <laughs> I just wanted to send him a message. 183 Hemlock. Did he get his wall finished while the water was down? Um, actually, yeah, it's, it's almost done. I've got That's some it. photos that he sent me that I've asked him to resend because they really didn't come out very clear. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was his delivery. And I'm meeting with him to um, review his progress at the office on the, uh, the 20, I believe the 26th. Okay. So I have scheduled. All right. 101 Pleasant? Um, I, the, the new owner hasn't taken over yet officially. Okay. I've been tracking that, so. All right. 70 Oak Ridge. 70 Oak Ridge um, I, is supposed to be restarting um, as far as their excavation work goes. Um, they haven't sent me the notification they're required to yet. Mm -hmm. um, I have site inspection scheduled for that next week as well. Um, and apparently they, they have video of somebody going on the property and looking around last weekend. Mm -hmm. So okay. that was interesting. 842 Rear Chase Road. Um, Mr. Palm is supposed to have his uh, report to me in the next couple weeks. Okay. Uh, Reservoir Road meeting with the residents. Um, so I'm going to be sending the letters out next week to have them come in for me um, the second meeting in May. All right. And Bob brought us up to date on the open space and the trail with the MRPC. Yeah, that saved a little work. Okay. That looks really promising. I think the concept of doing a trail master plan is something we should examine. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Lockett, go back to 155 because I'm not quite sure where we are there with that. This is where all the lots were infringing mm -hmm. um, on the Scalt area. Yeah. Um, and then we went off into this never neverland of looking at lots that weren't developed yet. Um, and I'm not sure where we are. Okay, I, I, at this point, I believe we tasked Matt with meeting with the residents to review their approved plans on where their limits of work are. Ah, okay. And so I'm meeting with them and bringing them to the, the second meeting in May so we can have a full discussion with the, with the commission. Okay, it, it, it didn't sound like that when, you, when we met that. So the, that's what the meeting is about. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're, the intent is to inform them of where they're spoke, where their line of limit of work is mm -hmm. and to pull back to that area. That, Bingo. That's yes. where we are. Yep. Okay. And I don't think we've heard anything on the development of the other side of the brook. Nothing at yet. this point. For that lap, so but there was another lot or two on that same side that was that they were still fooling around with defining how much developed the area they were Yeah, they, they they haven't done any proposal yet, so I have nothing I can okay. I can yeah, pay heard any more on it. Yeah. I mean, I'm still in discussions with Mr. Marchetti about it, so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, at this point, we've reached the end of our agenda. Is there any communications or public comments from commissioners? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, just a quick question. What happened to the drones? Remember, Todd, you had a some folks who wanted to come in and talk about the drones. They, they did. did. They did. And, and I'm saying, has there anything followed beyond that? No. Because I had uh, kind of a friend uh, just invested some hefty money into buying a drone and all the other pieces. And he's offering to just come back if we need any services. He'd be more than happy to donate his services. And uh, I just don't know if there was anything happening or... You know, a flyby over the pollinator garden or something like that. I, I, think, what learned, yeah. <laughs> I think what we learned from the pre presentation, Jack, is if, if someone wants to do that, we have to be very cautious about it because there's a lot the of trust uh, uh, regulations required by the FAA. Okay. That stuff that we want to make sure that the drive on dates. But we even are, are 
T's crossed and I's dotted. Okay. But they seem they, they, they seem to fully understand that and could keep you out of trouble mm -hmm. versus somebody who maybe wasn't in that business. Yeah. Okay. For, for, for a price. For, yeah. For a price. And right. Yeah. For a place. Okay. Communication. Well, but he's if if you're gonna do something for somebody else, you have to be a licensed drone pilot. It was their message. Right. And so your friend donates. Donates. He's not a licensed drone pilot, and there's all kinds of room for uh, issues. Right. There. Okay. So no, usually what that company that came in does is they set up and goes back to usually an airline for a town for their drones. They train the town how to use the drones, and then they're out of it. So they teach them how to use the drones. They help them through the licensing process, and then they're they're out of it. Oh, okay. And then the town runs their own, essentially, all their own drones. This is when they received it. Yeah, I think so it's a good subject to bring up. I mean, it was interesting, and we could use that. So that. Mm -hmm. I think we should have it on a future agenda to have a discussion if we want to. You know, pursue something along that line. Mm -hmm. You mean a drone? Well, not, not to buy our own drone and get trained, but I mean, there are services out there that will just do whatever you tell them to do. Mm -hmm. I guess some of it will be coming up with a project or a target that we had in mind first. Because the number one thing I took away from their discussion was the need for extensive public outreach. Absolutely. So before we got into any sort of hiring process, we should first submit a first discuss a project and then have public outreach for it. Yeah, and that's all I was saying. If yeah. we don't have an agenda, we won't discuss mm -hmm. the project. Yeah. So it would be good to have an agenda. If, if we are interested at in this project. point I'll just open it up. If somebody has a specific project, submit it to Matt and he can just um right by me to add to the agenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably the easiest the rather thing than we might want to look at too is there is a mm -hmm. national organization for drones for people you know for pilot training and things like that mm -hmm. um, and they do a lot of public outreach um, maybe I can get some materials from them too well, you have to be careful as somebody that holds the FCC license for a drone mm -hmm. they're pretty specific on it is for your own use mm -hmm. so you really can be using it for other activities. So you need to be really careful with that. And you'll get into trouble condoning it for others. But yeah, if anybody has a specific project or something, just let Matt know and we'll just add it to the agenda to discuss and figure out more forward. Yes, Mr. Pease. Um, regulation review. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love it if this commission would commit itself to scheduling another meeting where we actually like tried to finish revising the regulations. Okay. Uh, it seems like it's something that's always going to happen in the future and we never really get there. I second that this commission should be committed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. In so many ways. <laughs> so many ways. So <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, if somebody's looking to put forth dates, we certainly can try to tie the commission as a whole down. Mm -hmm. well, we already have something going on. The the May, so, yeah. yeah, we voted to do something that night. Yes, open space. Open, space. open space. Open space. So we are meeting as a commission three Wednesdays in the month of May. And I'd be thrilled with a date in June or July or any time, but just you know, just that it's it's. Put it forth. Which day would you well, like was, to attempt? Did you want to do the next meeting? We only have three new hearings, and they're small. Really, should probably just be its own. Its own? Yeah. That would be a recommendation. It's really hard to go from one to the other. Or a Saturday. We only got three new ones, but we continued mm. four or five of them tonight. Yeah. So. Yeah. It could be hefty. We had a Saturday that we were light on sidewalks. That might be a good time to say, yep. you know what, let's, let's sit down for a couple hours on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. yeah, some, well, somebody proposed a date. I was oh. hoping the chair would do that. I thought that was the chair's job no. to propose no, to I'm schedule meetings and. Uh, yeah, there's, 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 there's other members that I need to approve a date. So. <laughs> I like February. Florida. I do. So that would be great. 
I have a perfect spot to sit. See, you guys really don't want to revise the regulations. <laughs> I can tell. I just want to get my lawn done, and I want that white crap off it. That's all I want. Yeah. It'd be nice to have a spring day. Oh. Oh. I think I'd rather see it and get into June, get through May. We're already hit three days, plus the town meeting. June 2nd. June 9th. Or, yeah, I take that back, it'd be June 16th, because that would be a sidewalk day for the 20th. So I propose we have a Saturday morning meeting on June 16th for the purpose of regulation review. What time? What time does everybody get up? I. Are you bringing munchkins? No, I already, I brought my munchkins, dude. I'll bring the munchkins this time. <laughs> what was that, June what? I'm sorry. June 16th. No jelly for you. You like the chocolate? Okay. Gonna meet from eight to noon. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody on board? 10 a.m.? It's 8 to noon. 8 to noon? June 16th. June 16th. Oh, you're in good control. Okay. Let's see, Jane, what are you? Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 You want to do it here or you want, you want to do it in the rear building? Well, I'd say Ritter, right? I'd say it's probably easier in the Ritter. Okay, blocked off. Okay. Well, June, it's a site walk. But it's a site walk day, so. Yeah, yeah. We'll run around our site walk The thing is, we're going over advanced schedules, just just a heads up. Um, we're probably only gonna have one meeting in July because the first Wednesday is the fourth. Look at that. So we can, we can try to have another one in July, too. What do you call two successive um, months? Bob would be fall over. Would know what to do with himself. This is an off meeting week, so that's good because our meeting in August is the first and the fifteenth. But from August fourth to August eleventh, I will be out of state. Okay. I'm going to be taking my wife, kids, and grandson to see Mickey Mouse. So you know, Miss Jim, dress cool. Mr. Chairman, if it's a nice day in the middle of June like that, I'd recommend we do it on Bob's boat. Hey, if, Bob, if Bob's got a generator, we can have the TV out there and we can hook oh, up the laptop. Bob has a generator. He has a generator for sure. <laughs> he can even put up so his So when I post <laughs> the meeting, Commissioner Rabbit, when I post the meeting, how do I post the meeting place as Bob's boat? <laughs> Two, 208 Northfield Road. I think that's a discussion for another day. Yeah. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Good evening all. Good night. Wasn't that a great suggestion, Bob? Anyway, I nailed everything. I think it.